be fast-tracked. Health unions are obviously happy with the budget's record $2.4 billion investment in the sector, but Kendall Crow from Business SA is also applauding it. No surprise tax hikes and fees and charges kept at an average of 2%. That was quite pleasing for the business community. One of the big things that we've been arguing for for a long time is looking at public procurement measures to keep the dollars in South Australia where the government spends money. And we were pleased to see that nearly $4 million is going to that over the Ford estimate. Charges have been laid after a joyride in a stolen SUV at Christie's Beach. The Mitsubishi clipped a parked car before slamming into a veranda on Davis Avenue and catching fire shortly before three this morning. Three teens were seen running from the scene. A 13, 14 and 15 year old were arrested nearby. The eldest, a local girl, has now been charged. Victim Bruce Smashford has told Seven it was his SUV. They rang me up, they said it's just in the front garden in somebody's house and I thought we might be minor damage. But when I looked at it and looked at the bonnet, the fire had been through it and yeah, I just immediately knew it was a write off. The federal government is confident business can afford a 5.0% boost to the minimum wage. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has signed off on Labor's annual submission to the independent umpire. It recommends workers' pay increase in line with the current cost of living. Employment Minister Tony Burke says it's a necessary change. A dollar an hour is what we're talking about. And anyone who wants to say that somehow that can't be afforded I think completely lacks an understanding of what's going on in Australian households right now. Five more people with COVID have died in SA, bringing the state's death toll to 451 since the pandemic began. 232 people remain in hospital, including 10 in ICU. Another 2,468 new cases have been recorded today. The first day of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations have taken a toll. Royal reporter Natalie Oliveri says she's pulled out of the service of Thanksgiving at St Paul's Cathedral after suffering discomfort. That and the balcony appearance were said to be the two things that she was most likely to be at. So it is a little bit of a surprise that she has pulled out of this church service. Um, the 5AA said in a statement that Ms. She Dream made the decision with great reluctance after considering the journey and activity required. Turning to 5AA Sport, Ports players have returned to training today after a few days off with a bye this weekend. The Crows are up against West Coast at Adelaide Oval tomorrow, while the round gets underway tonight with the Western Bulldogs and Geelong at Marvel Stadium. In tennis, Coco Golf has become the youngest woman to reach a Grand Slam final since Maria Sharapova in 2004. The 18-year-old American will take on world number one Iga Sriatek for the French Open title. Playing Iga I mean, she's on a streak right now, obviously, and I think going in, I have nothing to lose. She's definitely the favorite going into the match on, on paper. I think that going in, I'm just going to play free and play my best tennis, and I think in a Grand Slam final, anything can happen. Now checking 5AA traffic. Add lights, view smash on Foster's Road near Folland Avenue, McGill Burst Water Main, Penfold Road near McGill Road. Seacliff Urgent Electricity Works today, Brighton Road near Seacon Road causing delays, and Darlington changed traffic conditions due to Ashfield Works. That's South Road at Marion Road, speeds reduced city bound. Slow right now, Grange Road near East Avenue with cameras Cavern Road, Dry Creek, and Main North Road at Evanston. Joyd belongs 35 or $45 mobile plan before June 30 and get up to 200 gigabytes every month for 12 months. Visit belong.com.au. For use in Australia. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. Get the Toyota forklift advantage. Visit toyotamaterialhandling.com.au. Showers increasing this afternoon 16, showers tomorrow 15 and Sunday showers 13. Right now it's 13 degrees. Now let's hear what's happening on 9 News Tonight. Is your flu jab really free? Why it'll pay to check that you won't be stung to be protected? The major shake-up to the minimum wage, which could boost your pay. See the stunning pictures from the Queen's Jubilee celebrations. Why 15-cent bags are a thing of the past at a major supermarket. And a key crow's hope for a comeback amid concussion concerns. I'm Brenton Ragless. See the full story on Nine News, tonight at six. This is Rowie's Sports Show. Stephen Rowe and Lee Forrest. Good afternoon. Nice to have you company. It is footy Friday. Thanks to Rusden Wines in the Barossa Valley. 
As you know, you might have heard it on the show. It's the home of the Black Gut Shiraz, rustinwines.com.au. Big show on the way. Charlie Dixon will join us. Mark Bickley will join us. Marco Bello from the Crows. Brian Taylor, Roaming Brian, is back. And we'll also catch up with the head of football at the West Coast Eagles, Gavin Bell. Stephen Rowe, good afternoon. Be drizzly out there, Leith, isn't it? The it weather's is. coming tonight and tomorrow. Round 12 starts tonight, cats and dogs. Care factor? Mm. Oh, I think this is a good one. Big game, yeah. Crows have the Eagles at 1.15 in the wind and driving rain we're hearing tomorrow. Some reckon it's a bit of a banana peel meat. Crows will win. They will win. Eagles stink. How's this stat? Mm. And the Bix book off. We'll see Bix after five. <laughs> They've lost their last seven games by an average of 79 points. Mm. That's not exactly glowing. No. I know the Crows have lost their last five, but in every single one of them, they're in it. The bookies have the line at 36 and a half points. Could be the best bet of the round. D. Wildy told me that. When Gam- Wilge gives me a bet, yes. gamble responsibly. Gamble responsibly. They very, 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 very rarely, if ever, lose. 36 and a half points they have been, in wind and rain. Yeah, they've been dreadful for a long time in the West Coast. Eventually that turns. Don't think it'll be this hey, week. Hey, what are you saying? I'm just saying. You say the word turns. banana once more. All right. Up, but up, but up. <laughs> hey, Ma- Matty Nix, um, talking about going in his favourites. Have a listen. Yeah, well, you learn from your experiences, don't you? So we, yeah, we feel like we learned a lot from the last time we were in this situation. We haven't put a lot of time into discussing that. We've over the last few weeks, we've put our heads down and gone to work and played a, a certain brand of footy that, that we're proud of playing. But that's our focus at the moment. So it's anywhere, any, anyone, any time. Yes, we are proud of the commitment, the grunt, the fight, the resilience, the grit. The, the scragging and all of that. But how about hitting targets? Anywhere, anyone, anytime. Well, hit targets. We heard actually Fog, Tex and Riley Philthorpe spent a good half hour practising goal kicking after training. That's a good start. Tom Duday and Nick Murray look like they've passed their fitness tests. Again, Nixie. Yeah, Tommy's fine. So Tommy's he's he's got up no worries. We we took this week to really rest him and and make sure that he was good to go. So he had a, a lighter week. And we do that, you know, regularly with players. But yeah, we'll go in as named. Well, last time he mm. stood, darling, he kicked five and a quarter. Um, the Eagles. Here's another stat: they've won eight of their last nine versus the Crows. Last week they lost by over a hundred points. So they're on the rebound. Be very wary of a team, a proud team that's on the rebound, certainly one that's coached by Simpson. It's going to be wet and windy, we know that. Crows have no buts. To say I'm slightly nervous is an understatement, mm-hmm. but I think Crows' best four quarters, Yes. and and we will see that. When I say their best, they, they're there for the fight. You, the Eagles will have to be really, really good and turn their form around to beat the Crows tomorrow in the wet. I think the Crows, I don't think they're going to do it easily. I think it's going to be one of those real dogged fights. The Slug. Crows will get four points. Yep. Porter back on the track after a four-day break. Uh, one bloke who's still in cotton wool and... He'd have to be nearly one's everyone's favourite, wouldn't he? Orazio Fantasia, he spoke to the 5AA Brecky team, David and Will. Absolutely. I yeah. think about it all the time. It's, it's funny, and, and probably a lot of AFL players won't say that, but when you have lots of injuries, you always question yourself, are you going to um, get back and play? How long is it going to take? This is another one. Are mm. you ever going to fulfil your potential is a big question that I always you know, think about, which mm. is tough to do. Well, it's only going to be injury that doesn't. We've seen your potential. Yeah. Aracio, we've seen your best, and I love watching him. But he's a good month away if that's his driver, and that's sad for him. Scotty Lysett's the other one. He's still listed as seven to eight weeks. Mm. So how many games left? Eleven. Mm-hmm. Going to take a couple to get fit. I mean, honestly, I can see why they selected that 203-centimetre Ruckford Bryn Tickle yesterday. Bryn. Apparently he arrives tomorrow. And on a positive note, Port Captain Tommy Jonas on Nine News is looking ahead to a big June. Destiny's um, in our hands. We've got to go out there and compete hard every single week and play our best footy. Otherwise, we won't have a um, chance of making September. Yeah, there you go. Just a quick sip and save text. Keep them coming in. Lines available. Eight double two three double O double O. Just landed on the corner of my eye as I was doing Tommy Jonas. No, no, not another crow show. Give another team a go. There's no name to that. Can I just say for the one hundredth time, mm-hmm. Port only came back two days. Yes. Every day we've asked for a person. You cannot get them, and nor should they give up their time. They're on bloody holidays. Next week they can shine. What do we got? Ken Hinkley on Monday, yes. Charlie Dixon very, very shortly, hmm. and for the next five days after the Crows win, 
You won't hear a word from them. As we look down the list Jeez. here, Port Adelaide cover with Charlie, Gavin Bills from the West Coast Eagles, yes, Bix and Marco Bello from anyway. the Crows, and Brian covers everything. I'm sick of really having to defend okay. ourselves. But you if that's the if that's the inference, well... You get distracted, though. Mm -hmm. That text Well, well it landed oh, no. right in front of my Read eyes. Read the one above that from Wayne. West Coast to win easy. Wayne. Come on, Wayne. <laughs> Give it a spell. Um, we built it at the start of the week, and I think it really is this. June is Port's time to shine, and it's now or never for this month. Tigers next Thursday. MCG can win. Sydney at home, they'll win, and Suns at home, they'll win. Big month. Massive I'm looking month. forward to this month. Yeah. And and for the Crows, they'll have a buy come back. They've got some winnable games in there. North, the Suns. Hey, this time of the year, champion data bring out some real key stats. Now, why would you not? It's 11 games in a season. For me, that would be a good sample size to develop what you'd call trends or averages or percentages because what champion data like to do is compare the best against the best and best numbers against worst numbers. Yes. How's this? This article landed today. Your club's best kick and worst. Mm. I'll start with Port because this person here is a little bit suki suki la la. Yep. Port's worst kick in their club is Ollie Wines. Yeah, that's surprising. 30% of the time he hits a target. So two and three go to the, either the opposition or to nobody. Seven out of ten don't hit the target. There you go. With Ollie. Now, now remember with Ollie, he's getting it in traffic. Yep. He's getting it under pressure. But but champion data take all of that into the equation. So if you're, let's pick a player, Caleb Daniel, mm -hmm. and you're kicking out, you're not under pressure, you get Correct. a lot of those kicks Should and no one's chasing out. you, he hits about 80% of his targets. Mm -hmm. If you're in traffic, like all the big bulls, Cripps is one. Cripps goes at about 40-odd percent. The worst kick of every team in this list, they're all good players. Jack yeah. Chris. Collingwood, Paddy Cripps, as you mentioned, uh, Tim Taranto at the Giants, Noah Anderson at because the Because they get it in They're tight. In the and they just kick and it out. And they hack the it out. Yeah. So, so you've got to put a little bit of that caveat on there. Dion Presti. But they Jack do Steele. take, this is the whole point, they take that into consideration where you get it and how you get it. Yeah. If you've got a free leg and there's no one up your blurter and you can mm -hmm. hit a target, they put that into a percentage as well. So Wally needs to get better at that. Yep. Their best, when I say theirs, Ports, no surprise either, Zach Butters. No, okay. I might have had a uh, Dan Rosie, Houston, Dan Houston, Rosie, yep. Burton, Burton, Brian Burton. But, but, but they're Frank. all in their top ten okay. as players. And you're right. But Zach Butters, with champion data, hits targets. The Crows, the Crows, mm -hmm. worst by a fair way. Ben Keys, yep, thirty-eight point one percent. He hits a target, and and again, he does get it in traffic. He gets it under pressure. But I think where Keezy will need to take his footy to the next level, and I'm sure he's working on it, when he has a chance to hit a lead up, that's either on the wing, the midfield, yep. or forward, which is the critical one, he's got to hit them. Correct. When it's his turn to shine, he needs to hit the targets. And their best, no surprise, Jordan <laughs> Dawson. So mm. if I had to said to any Crow or Port, name the best kick and the worst kick, yep. I think they'd have come up with that. Carlton are the number one club for kicking in hitting targets more mm. than any other team. Correct. They are the number one club. No wonder they're in a top four. No wonder they've improved. And that's exactly what Vossi said. When we get it, mm. we're going to be really good at getting it. But when we've got it, we've got to use it. They also go wide and they go short. They so do. Bang, they do. Hit so that, and that's their hit style that, of hit play. That, hit that. Porter ninth in that group and mm. Crows are seventeenth. Only North are worse. So I didn't need champion data to tell me those stats. I didn't need champion data to determine those stats. Only, um, I'll just go through other clubs in this order. Bunger Hearn, the Eagles, Pendlebury Collingwood, Caleb Daniel Dogs, Mitch Duncan for Geelong. I've never seen him miss a target. No. They're the top four he in the comp. 72%. They're Mitch in the top Duncan. four. Wow. I mean, that is incredible. Jordan Dawson's up there as well. So if you can win it, that's the key. You've got to win it and use it. And when you use it, that means making good decisions under pressure by foot. You generally win the game. And if you've got more players in your team that are good kickers, good kickers, end of story, put down the glasses, put a W next to the name. Yep. Crows can win it as good as any team. They're contested numbers because they're scraggers. But they're the 17th mm. worst That's amazing. for kicking. Port win it not a lot. Sometimes when they get it right, they're terrific, but they've been a bit you know, inconsistent with that. And they're not good enough at using it. Mm. Hence... They're out of the eight.
Do you Both know clubs what, need to get the kicking right. They do. Do you know an interesting stat on that that I saw? Ben Keys in all the list of the worst kicks, you know, by percentage in the AFL, he's kicked the most. He's had the most kicks of everyone on that list for the worst of their club. So maybe that's part of his game that he looks at to get it in the hands of someone else as mm. opposed to yep. take that kick on himself. He's 168 kicks, whereas you look at someone like Caleb Sarong has only had 100 kicks. Yeah. So he had 70 well, more kicks. Well, well, to, yeah, but to qualify for this champion data stat over a great period of time, you needed to have 100 kicks minimum. Correct. Now, that's a good sample size. Yeah. That is a great sample size, and you wouldn't want to be a road scholar to work out who's your best and work kick, kick kicks in your club. The key to that is, is if you're a good kicking team, yeah. you win football. Well, we know that Ben Keys has heart and he has grit, He's and he gets it, that. and he runs. Maybe just use the hands. Well, the champion data says it. Worst kick in the club. You can have your say, any sporting issue across the weekend, how are you feeling leading into a big week of AFL footy. We are endeavouring, and hopefully we can do so before 6 o'clock, because... You've experienced this, and it'd be nice for the Parnell family. We're trying to speak to the Parnell family ahead of young Paddy's debut for the Adelaide Crows this weekend. Well, they're probably on a plane coming over mm. here because they live in Tassie, don't they? It'd be exciting. Well, I've lived it. Yeah. My mum and dad are here because my little Gemma is due to have a baby tomorrow. She's seven days overdue. Come on, Gemma. Little Gemma, she doesn't listen, but someone might tell her that I mm -hmm. gave her a shout-out. Just smash the little sucker out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> seven days. So you'll be a pop as of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. How when James runs out onto the ground at 1.15, yep. he will be an uncle, and how I'll be a grandpa. That? How good is that? And Gemma, my little Jemmy, will be a mummy. Well done. Your little cue, a little baby crying Gemma sound. Gemma Phoebe Rowe? Gemma Phoebe Rowe. We will find you a... How did you know that? That's so many times I mentioned a name. Have. What's Tori's middle name? Uh, no, I don't no know No clue. That. And no. what's James' middle name? Gee, I don't know that. There you go. It's there always go. Gemma Phoebe Rowe. Yeah, Lee, there you go. That's Who's my favourite? Uh, hey? <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> Lots of text messages coming through. We'll get to those. We'll check the traffic. And oh, as we mentioned, beautiful. Footy Friday for Rusden, it is a big show on the way. And for, yes, Port Adelaide fans who have been starved of Port Adelaide flavour, Charlie Dixon at Four Thirds. Port Adelaide legend and larrikin Tim Ginova joins Rowie's Sports Show each week. Thanks to the Lakes Hotel. It's a beauty! See every AFL game live and loud at the amazing sports bar in the Lakes Hotel, West Lakes. Whether you live south of or near the city, when it comes to driving a new Mitsubishi, you have two clear standouts. Wavell Mitsubishi on Goodwood Road and Southern Mitsubishi on South Road. The only thing separating these incredible teams is location. Both share the same passion for excellence in customer service and customer satisfaction. When it comes to a new Mitsi, the choice is clear. Wavell Mitsubishi on Goodwood Road and Southern Mitsubishi on South Road. Both driven by Australian Motors. LVD 80. I'm Mark, an intensive care doctor at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. We've seen over 300 COVID deaths here in South Australia. I see the people behind these statistics and most hadn't had their third COVID shot. If I can share just one piece of advice this winter, it's that being double vaxxed isn't fully vaxxed. And a third shot is your best shot at not catching COVID, spreading COVID or ending up in hospital. Book your third COVID shot now. A message from the Government of South Australia. 20 minutes past four. We've got a $50 pounds voucher. Lines available to have you say. So port supporters, if you're missing a chat mm -hmm. about your great team, get on the blower. Get on the blood and bone. Get on the phone. Hey, we've all got our favourites in life and there's nothing better than a trip to the hills, to the Barossa. They've got the ancient soils, old vines. Some of them are over 120 years old and plenty of those first class wines. The entire region is world class, but a must stop. I implore you, I ask you, I say to you, go and check my mates out at Rusden. I've done the trip or two <laughs> well, a fair few times. I mean, honestly, you sit by their fireplace, have a glass of my old faithful, the black guts. The company is superb. The wine is excellent. The Rusden family boasts seven generations of grape growing experience, and they reckon they got it pretty well down pat. Of course they have, because they've got the best bit of dirt ever. It's an ideal climate up there. They produce quality wines year in, year out. They're quality wines, and trust me, world-renowned, you will not be disappointed. Even if it's a rosé, not even, a rosé, a port, a Shiraz, a Cab Sav, the boundaries. Get in and get it all down your gills. It's brilliant. It's a great time of the year, too. Footy is back, and footy season means red season. Do yourself a favour. Make yourself your next red a Rusden. Check out rustonwines.com.au So here's a question. What's behind a pair of glasses? Eyes. 
And do you know what's behind the glasses at Specsavers? Optometrists. Yes, every Specsavers store is locally owned and operated by a qualified, experienced optometrist whose only focus is improving yours. So as well as a superb range of frames at great prices, you can be confident that your eye health is in great hands too. So book an eye test today. Should have gone to Specsavers. Swan has been keeping Australian families safe for 35 years and is number one in do-it-yourself security. Swan has a complete lineup of security solutions from 4K CCTV systems with sensor lights and alarms to wireless cameras, doorbells and more. Receive alerts, see and control everything on your phone using the Swan Security app. It's easy and affordable. Swan Security from Bunnings, Harvey Norman, J-Card, JV Hi-Fi, The Good Guys and Swan.com. Prevent crime all the time with Swan Security. Did you know that coffin signing is gaining popularity at funerals? Guests are asked to write a message to their loved one on a light-coloured coffin. For a personalised goodbye at a price you can afford, talk to the team at simplicityfunerals.com.au. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry. Call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA-approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sport Show. 23 minutes after four, just before we check the traffic, a little bit of sad news. If anyone reads the Herald Sun and has done so for many years, Ron Reid, long-time oh. cricket journalist and football journalist, passed away today. So Could he only be my age? Yeah, he's 53. Oh, well, younger than me. Condolences to his family. Oh, you spoke to him not long ago because he put out the book about Ash Barty. I did. I did. When He's followed retired. Ash Barty a number of times, written yeah. two or three books. So commiserations and yeah. condolences, obviously, to the family, uh, colleagues and friends of uh, Ron Reid, who's passed away today. Let's check the traffic for your drive home. At Cumberland Park, smash on Goodwood Road near Crossroad. Lights for you. Another collision there. Foster's Road near Folland Avenue. McGill vs. Water Main, Penfold Road near McGill Road. And Seacliff, Urgent Electricity Works, Brighton Road near Seacombe Road. Busy right now, the parade, Glenburn Road to Port Rush Road with a camera, Jubilee Avenue at Angerston. State Budget 22, providing better care for you with more doctors, nurses, ambos and hospital beds. See what's in it for you at statebudget.sa.gov.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. 24 minutes after four, a couple of text messages coming through on the Sip and Save text line. You can shoot them through 0448081395. Jack says, Rowie, you have not experienced love like when you become a grandparent. I've heard that. A lot of people say that. So you think about it, your daughter or son yep. is born and then your daughter or your son have a baby, mm. it would be next level. And the good thing is you give them back. And thank you to the well wishes off air that wanted to come on. What are you going to do tomorrow, Rowie, if it comes while you're calling football? Yeah. Well, I'll be calling footy. That's right. It's my daughter. She wouldn't want me anywhere near the <laughs> Don't delivery Don't think room. you're urgently needed right at that minute. But no. You get your With your wife, you wouldn't miss it because it's yours. Yep. This is Gemma's and Eddie's, not mine. Dougie says, Rowie, they're going to increase the pro fisherman's whiting tonnage so much for the heard weekend, that. Fisho. I heard that. Steve at Hectorville, um, how do you explain that when they're full-time footballers in terms of having a break? Well, they've got to have a break, Steve. It's a long season, 22 rounds. This one from Marg, what do you got to do to get it through the Port Adelaide supporters' heads to understand they're having a break? Maybe drill a hole in their head and shout into the hole. Thank you, Marg. Yeah, good call, Marg. Mao says, what would the Crows have to pay or would they look at bringing Malcolm Light to the club. Would you get Malcolm back in any way, shape, or form? Oh, absolutely. If he wanted to be a footy director, if he wanted to be a board member, I'd parachute him into that club tomorrow. Ten weeks ago, mm. twelve weeks ago, twelve months ago. A football head like that that's seen it all and done it all. Do you think the Crows have everything they need off field to take them forward? Do you think Matthew could do with a a more experienced head, I guess. That would like be the proviso. Blood. If Matty didn't want that and he's happy with what he's got, you wouldn't. But, I mean, why would you not have him on your board? Mm. I don't know whether he's ever put his hand up to be on the board. Probably hasn't got time to. He's on the show after us. Probably more indeed. important. Loves his golf. Man about town. And this one said, with uh, Jeremy McGovern back in the West Coast side, hopefully the Crows will not continuously kick it to him like they did to mm. Tom Stewart oh, last I'll week. Spew up Surely at the they will learn Or if Bunga Hearn gets 40, I'll spew up. Hello, Daniel. Hey, boys. Where hey, you know with? what the only problem with these uh, AFL rolling fixtures are? What's that? When you're, a team, when you're a team, there's a bunch of scraggers and it's in your DNA, you get a 1.15 Saturday time slot. There you go. Absolutely. We, I reckon there'll be less than 22,000 tomorrow. No. Oh. Well, it's going to be wet. 
it's going to be windy. Yep. It's going to be cold. It's um, amateur league, football league, netball. It's all the afternoon sports. And they're not travelling exactly, you know, flush. And they're playing the West Coast Eagles. What I do know is they're a fair chance of winning four points, Dan. Well, I hope so, mate. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they'll be right. I'm, I'm not going to have a crack at either club for their crowds. No. Because times have changed a bit. And I think it's going to take a bit to come back. And it will, and it will when both the clubs are absolutely flying. So Thanks, the Dan. lowest crowd this year was Port Adelaide and Melbourne. Yeah. Was that on a Thursday night, though? Yes, it Which was. Which is difficult for yeah. country people, etc. Yes, it was. 23,058. Yeah, Kim, good. before we get to the break. Hello, Kim. Hi, Lee. G'day, Rowie. Rowie, I was, I was wondering um, if Kimmy knew what, what's happening with um, Cetus that uh, plays for the West Torrens uh, would be legal, so... In the grand final, we went to Gold Coast. I haven't heard from him. What's going on? Yeah, he's playing. He just hasn't been able to crack the team. The team's doing well. James Cheetahs. Uh, Ripper fella. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Luco's injured. Luco's injured. Okay. Let, let... One thing I was just going to say about um, the other day was uh, about Taylor Walker. He's a character of the game as well, Steve. Yes. You know, and so is um, Boak from Port. Yes. You know, when, when they speak after a match, you know, there's usually some entertainment that about it. Mm. And it, you don't get the same old, uh, oh, I played a quality player and it was a quality team and it was quality, quality, you know. It's just the same old hymn book. Um, you're yep. just like somebody that's not robotic, you know. Yep. Somebody with, with missing characters. Yep, I'm with you 100%, Kim. Great call. Thanks for that. You're in the running for the $50 Powers voucher. What about this text? This wouldn't be hard. But I hope Rowie's first grandchild is better looking and more intelligent than his good self. Oh, Marie. Well, well, thanks, Marie. Come on. Tim says I... It's my first grandchild. I'm going to have one tomorrow, right around. Tim says I reckon a few bottles of Black Gut Shiraz might be uncorked tomorrow well, night. There's a fair chance well, of that. What if it comes out tonight? There might be a little bit of... Um, <laughs> It'll be a good a call tomorrow. A little bit of loosey-goosey at 1.15 tomorrow. <laughs> be listening to 5AA's call if things turn pear-shaped. That could be on. 29 minutes after four. Charlie Dixon next. 5AA Breakfast. We're joined by the Prime Minister of Australia, Anthony Albanese. Prime Minister, good morning to you. No need to thank us for getting you there. You don't need to do that. I know you, that's what you wanted to do. <laughs> well, two tribes, I think, was the key. Well, that's what we've been one, saying one, all morning. One, one went up and one went out. <laughs> Informing Adelaide. Do we have to be sensible and statesmanlike now that you've got the top job? Well, mate, that's beyond your pay grade. 6am <laughs> <laughs> weekdays on 5AA. Good pals are hard to find, but at Parafield Airport Liquor Store, hard to find is our specialty. Whether you're after old reliable pals or want some new pals, Sam, Jamie and the team know just the pals for you. They've made pals with over 200 gins, over 300 craft beers, over 500 whiskies from around the world and over 2,000 wines. Parafield Airport Liquor Store, pals, open till late seven days. Next to Roulette's Tavern, Kings Road, Parafield. Oh, it's cold outside, but it's hotting up at Harris Scarf. Looking for fleecy jammies for a toasty bod? You're warm. A new bright toaster to start the day off right? Getting warmer? A winter coat to face the day, rain, hail or shine? Warmer, warmer. A slow cooker to make you shine at dinner time? You're really warm now. How about bedding and electric blankets to get you through the night? Hot, hot, hot. Harris Scarf's Giant June. All you need to make a chilly winter feel like a heat wave. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Good afternoon, I'm Michaela Kamarek. The state government's announced construction of the new Mount Barker Hospital will start in 2024, two years earlier than expected. Australians on the minimum wage could soon receive a pay rise to match current cost of living. World leaders are congratulating Queen Elizabeth as her platinum jubilee is celebrated and round 12 in the AFL gets underway tonight with the Western Bulldogs and Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Now checking 5AA traffic. At Cumberland Park, some on Goodwood Road near Crossroad. Lights for another collision there. Foster's Road near Folland Avenue. McGill Burst Water Main, Penfold Road near McGill Road and Seacliff Urgent Electricity Works Brighton Road near Seacombe Road. Busy right now, the parade, Glenburn Road to Port Rush Road with a camera at Jubilee Avenue at Angerston. State Budget 22, providing better care for you with more doctors, nurses, ambos and hospital beds. See what's in it for you at statebudget.sa.gov.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic. 
on 5AA. Showers tonight, a low of 11. Showers continuing tomorrow, 16. Right now it's 13 degrees. More news at 5 o'clock and as it happens on 5AA. I'm Cathy Nagel, the Chief Executive Officer of Western Hospital at Henley Beach. Western Hospital is a proud sponsor of our local sporting clubs. We also assist in providing sports injury management through our GP clinic and the many services offered by our orthopaedic surgeons, physicians, physiotherapists and radiology department. If you have a sporting injury or you're just seeking a second medical opinion, visit Western Hospital, your one-stop healthcare hub. Westernhospital.com.au, your hospital that cares. You need to get a booster to stay up to date with your COVID-19 vaccinations. Boosters are now approved for everyone 16 years and older, three months after your second dose. Boosters increase your protection against becoming very sick or dying from COVID-19 and are available through your GP, pharmacist or other healthcare professional. Book your booster at australia.gov.au Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. This week at Foodland, Aussie Premium Beef Blade Bowler Roast. Your roast of the day, just fourteen fifty a kilo. Till June 7th, more stocks last. Foodland, the mighty South Aussies, yeah. Hey, it's Callum here. It's not by chance that Edward Sound Mazda is located bang on South Road. They wanted to make it easy to get your car serviced. Any make or model. Make a pit stop at Edward Sound Mazda. It's gotta be. EdwardsTownMazda.com.au Walker Crash Repairs. For easy insurance repairs on your caravan, get it fixed right with Walker Crash Repairs. This is Rowie's Sports Show. 27 minutes to 5. Footy Friday thanks to Rusden Wines in the Barossa Valley. Mark Bickley, Marco Bello coming up after 5 o'clock and it's back. It was shut down because of COVID. Roaming Brian on Channel 7 tonight. We'll speak to BT about that. But we always love to catch up with Charlie Dixon on a Friday for Maccas. You can earn points on your Maccas run after the game with My Maccas Rewards. Maccas SA is the home of footy. Charlie Dixon, good yeah. hands for yeah, Mark. It's, it's coming back. It's magnificent kick by Charlie. Charlie's got space. Charlie's got the footy. Charlie Dixon! Well, we heard that on the weekend. Charlie, welcome. G'day guys, how are we? Good to be back. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Loved it. You kicked a couple, always looked a threat, gave a few out, um, more than solid. How, how is the ankle and the body? How did it all pull up? Yeah, really, apart from I was, I was pretty exhausted by the end of the game. Um, it's, uh, yeah, definitely uh, need a little bit more of a tank to be able to sort of keep running out in the second half. But um, no, body pulled up really well, uh, just sort of normal... Um, bumps and bruises and all that sort of stuff. But other than that, ankle was, uh, yeah, pretty solid. Yeah. It was a slog in the end. The second half, the team only kicked one goal. But um, it was good to go into the bye with four points. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. We uh, sort of got smashed in the contested possession and in the centre bounce. And, but, um, no, we were able to hang on and um, be able to sort of, yeah, just hang on, really. Yeah. I suppose that was it. Nothing wrong with that. And you're back today from your four-day break? Yes. Yeah, the boys are back today. I'm uh, still a little, I'm a little bit of a sniffle, so I've got to stay away from the club. So, uh, um, yeah, but the boys are back today, and then we'll have a main training session tomorrow. Okay. There's a bit of influenza going around, so you don't think it's COVID. You think it might be just the flu? Yeah. COVID, I think it's just a bit of the flu, mate. Yeah. And um, I think that's... That's about all it is, really. You sound so. as flat as a bush biscuit, Charlie, just between you and I. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> good, man. Um, Four-day break. Did you you have a good break? It, it, I think it's a great thing the AFLPA's brought in with the AFL for the year. It does give you that little freshener up more so mentally. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I haven't done a whole lot. I had my parents here for this, this week. They went back on Wednesday and... Um, but yeah, no, it definitely is. It, I was sort of looking forward to playing and playing again because I've sort yes. of had one one game, one week off, one game, one week off. But no, definitely is something that's needed um, throughout the year. Probably even two, I reckon, would would go astray oh, with sort of okay. a few games that sort of you end up having five day breaks and stuff like that. So to be, a, I reckon, a, a second one would go astray um, and uh, give the boys um, a bit more time to sort of recover and. and Make sure you got the best product out there. Yeah. Do any of the lads go to the club and, you know, they can't tear themselves away? Are you told to stay away from the club? Uh, 
I guess some uh, some blokes do. I would uh, just go and do a bit of a gym session. Okay. I, I sort of go outside the... I'll, I'll go to a sort of public gym up here in Sterling that I go to, but, yeah, I'll definitely stay away from the club and uh, <laughs> try and have a break. Yeah. I think that's, that's, that's what it's all about and there's mm. no point in going into work when you... When you've got time off, <clears throat> can can interstate lads go back home? Are they allowed to that, or is COVID still affecting the travel? Yeah, no. Um, a few boys went home. Uh, they Good. just sort of had to get, have to get a PCR test um, when they come back in yesterday. Mm, I think okay. it was, or one this morning. Or, yeah, yesterday they had to have a PCR test, and and results sort of come back negative mm. by the end of the day, or night, or today. So then they can go to training. This block of June, I don't know how Ken's billing it. He'll probably do it this week. Um, just looking ahead, Richmond Thursday. And they're all winnable games this next four games. It's it's a big month for June to set your season up. Charlie, do you do you sense that, know that, or are you just living in the moment as a team? Oh, no, we know every game from now on is, you know, like do or die. So we want to try and give ourselves the best opportunity to be able to play finals and um, and yeah, be sort of at the pointy end of the season. And that, because of our start, it needs to be, you know, like um, try and win every game we can, I suppose, and, and put that emphasis on it that we, we need to win these mm. games. And, and the reality is, is that we do. Yeah. Port snagged a young Tickle. He's 203 centimetre. He's a, sort of like a ruck forward from WA. Just a, another player that's snapping at your heels. Charlie, <laughs> did you give him a call? Did you... You, you get interested in all of that? The new player at the club mid-year? Um, no, I, I did see that. But um, no, I haven't sort of spoken to him yet. But I'm sure once he sort of comes over, we'll, we'll give him his welcome. And um, hopefully he'll be able to fit in really well and, and provide us with some uh, depth. And, mate, you've got to love a bit of uh, competition within the team. It, it sort of keeps players on their toes. And I know it helps me enormously to be able to perform and keep myself um, in really good shape and to to know that there are young blokes who coming from my spot is something that you know you've got to be able to uh, adapt to the way the game's played and be able to be fit throughout the year and um, and yeah that's that's something that I, I think it, it's critical in, in a football team is having um, depth and having um, players uh, competing for their, for their spot on the side so no one gets comfortable everyone has to continue to work yeah, no, nah, good confidence. Well said. Hey, Chuck's Garage, episode yep. nine, that's landed. I got on the YouTube and had a little Bo Peep, Charlie. It's a, yep. a VH, V8 355 stroker, I think you called it. But um, yes. between you and I, of all the episodes, I think this was the best burnout. <laughs> <laughs> Your laugh, that, that was, was it the best burnout? Uh, yeah, it would have to be up there. He, uh, <laughs> he just sort of hang on to it. And like that was, that's the thing. is like he, they all come and they all see the black lines out the front of the place and, or see the videos and they want to up the next bloke. So they all just go, get carried on and, and yeah, they, they just sort of make sure it's, it's bigger and better so they can have those bragging rights, I suppose. But, yeah, they've done a really good job with that one. <laughs> well, I'll cut you some slack for the Chuck's merchandise. Um, we'll do that next Coming. week. Seeing as though you're home with the sniffles, all right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mate. I'll get it there next week. I you, promise. You'll be sweet. Hey, Charlie, look after yourself. Will do, mate. Thanks for Yeah, thanks for look, much. they've built some real resilience, the group. The second half of the year is here. Um, and I built it. June's a big month. June is a big month. Charlie Dixon. Our guest. And Big Charlie is brought to us each and every week by Maccas. Certainly is. Maccas SA is the home of footy. And whether you're Port, Crows, East or West, it's the home of a good feed after the game, isn't it? Just how many times are you just busted to have a Maccas? Yep. Don't forget the app to earn your My Maccas rewards. Bring us Charlie Dixon. Very surely we'll catch up with Charlie. the West Coast Eagles. You can hear that game tomorrow, 12.30. Wilds, Bix, Stephen Rowe, the new grandfather. We hope, we expect by that time. Uh, five AA's Best of SA celebrating and profiling some of the great brands in our state. A business that is near and dear to you, Rowie. Today we are celebrating TJM South Australia for your chance to win a $100 TJM South Australian gift voucher plus two tickets to our Best of SA dinner Friday the 17th of June at the Adelaide Oval. Give us a call now, 8223-0055. And if you are four-wheel driving, if you want to get there, you want to get TJM equipped, 
TJM, Nailsworth, and Clovelly Park. Yeah, he's brilliant. It's low. Saw him today. Great man. Isn't he just? Let's check the traffic for your drive home. At Dry Creek, there's a smash on the north-south motorway off-ramp to the Salisbury Highway. Powerfield Gardens, collision there. Shepherdson Road near the Salisbury Highway. Cumberland Park, another collision. Goodwood Road near Cross Road. And McGill, look out for a burst water main. Penfold Road near McGill Road. Slow going at Seacliff at the moment. That's due to urgent electricity works. Brighton Road near Seacombe Road. With cameras Midway Road, Elizabeth Park. And Port Wakefield Road at Bolivar. Want to snag yourself a bargain? Shop epic deals on electronics, homewares, beauty and more with Amazon's mid-year sale. Live now at Amazon.com.au. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Can you believe it? It's the end of financial year already. Hi, it's Callum here for Edwardstown Mazda. And if you're thinking about a new Mazda, now is the time to jump in. See the team at Edwardstown Mazda today for unbeatable end of financial year deals. LMVD 207428. The absolute final deadline in the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery is in one week. Imagine waking up to luxury every day in a fully furnished Scott Salisbury home at Henley Beach. Plus, you can stop dreaming and start living with $1 million in cash. Make the dream yours and purchase a ticket before it's too late. Join the fight for cures, better treatments and improved care. Visit homelottery.com.au. License M14166. Dan Murphy's June catalogue is out now. Shop unbeatable catalogue offers in store or on the Dan Murphy's app today. But hurry, offers end Wednesday, June 15. Choose to drink wise, conditions apply. A Meals on Wheels volunteer has her say. I don't know, I think Meals on Wheels is, is definitely a good organisation to volunteer for. I feel that I'm really helping out the people I deliver to and also the organisation. And yeah, it's enjoyable and satisfying. Get behind the wheel and volunteer for Meals on Wheels. Go to mealsonwheelssa.org.au. I think it's just a feel-good thing. And because Gore is quite a small community, I guess, it's nice just to be involved in that. Garden Grove is celebrating 40 years of supplying the garden that you want. Thanks to our customers for your continued support. With over 10 acres, Garden Grove has everything you need, from gifts to compost and everything in between to make gardens thrive. Relax at the cafe, be inspired by the nursery and chat to our qualified horticulturalists to make it happen. Garden Grove, the garden that I want. Visit gardengrove.com.au Attention Dilly Dalliers. If you thought you'd run out of time to score a great end of financial year deal on a new Volkswagen, listen to this. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen is about to receive truckloads of new Volkswagens and they're available at amazing end of financial year prices. And remember Mawson Lakes Volkswagen for servicing too, with next day servicing and free loan cars. Don't dilly dally, dawdle or delay. Get a great deal on Volkswagen now. Mawson Lakes Volkswagen, just a short drive from the city. Oh yeah, love is all around us, honey. Can you feel it, baby? I can't wait to wrap my tentacles around you. Love is all around in Waiawa for the annual Cuttlefish mating season. A spectacular natural event on now to the end of August that brings divers and marine experts to Waiawa from all over the world. It's a festival of love. For great accommodation deals, call the Sundowner Motel Hotel and book now. All part of the Barrow Hotel Group. Scrape your caravan, Walker Crash Repairs, an RAA approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie Sports Show. Quarter to five, footy Friday, thanks to Russ and Wines in the Barossa Valley. Mark Bickley, Marco Bello coming up after five o'clock, and then with the return of Roaming Brian, Brian Taylor from 5 for 30. Well, Eagles come to town. They take on the Crows tomorrow. Arvo, it'll be live on 5AA. Joining us is West Coast footy manager Gavin Bell. Gavin, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks, Roy. Thanks for having me. Have you have you arrived yet? Yeah, no, we got here yesterday, uh, sort of middle of the day yesterday. We had an early flight out of Perth, and um, yeah, got the train on Adelaide Oval today. So yeah, we're we're ready to go. How did that go? Because they don't normally let people on there. You guys must have paid them or something, did you? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> we have uh, very good footy ops people and Benny Sharp and that that's got all that organised for us, mate. So yeah, it was good to get out on the deck. Mm. You got a blooming good record there too, haven't you, as a club? Yeah, we've had some really good wins there over the um, over our time. So um, yeah, we we love playing there. Um, we feel like we're embraced by the city when we come here with our supporters. We've had a couple of fantastic South Australians in our team over the time. So um, yeah, look, we we really enjoy playing there. 
Okay. Just the one change, Bunga Hearn back. Is that your settled team now? Yeah, so Shannon comes back in. Unfortunately, Jermaine Jones went out with concussion. So, yeah, Bung's, Bung has been out for a couple of weeks, um, but he gets to uh, come back into the side. And, yeah, it's going to be great to have Shannon back out there. Mm. Crows generally send one up to the stoppage from the half forward or, or even not the stoppage, but up into the play. The last couple of weeks, St Kilda's Hill got a hold of them and Geelong's Stewart got a hold of them. Do you, you think they'll do the same thing and allow Bunga to run around like an unregistered dog? Let's hope so. If oh, Bung gets to well. do that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be good for us. But, um, yeah. yeah, look, uh, you know, we've had a look at them over the last couple of weeks and they have done a few different things there. And um, they're obviously a very good ground ball side and uh, done a lot of work on their contest stuff with, under Nixie and um, Scotty Burns and Nate Van Burlo. So, yeah, look, we're expecting it to be really tough and tight in there. So whether they mm. stand one up or let the coaches make their decision on what they, they mm. do um, in, in response to that. Going to be wet and windy tomorrow. What adjustments will you make with that? And are you a good wet weather team? Well, we haven't had a lot of wet weather footy, to be honest. So um, yeah, look, we're we're looking forward to that challenge. If that's the case, mm. we did have a look at the forecast. So I don't know which way the wind blows there, Rope. It's thirty to forty kilometre winds, and it's coming from the west. What does that mean? Does that mean it's coming across the ground, or you don't ask me, Gav? Because I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I did hear that, actually you've got strong crows connection actually. So um Well my colt yeah. plays for him. <laughs> yeah, I did hear that actually. I did hear yeah, that. So, you were right. Yeah, look, um we'll be yeah, I mean what whatever it is it is, um we we'll, we'll just do our best mm, to put brilliant. four quarters of footy together and, and have a crack at the crows. I I'm at a loss, Gavin. I'm sure you guys are as an executive and your coaching group. Nine premiership players are still in the team as we sit here today. Last I looked, Tim Kelly goes okay, but you one win. Your bottom with one win. What what happened? What are, what are the reasons? Well, um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of little different factors with it. I must admit. But um, to start off with, we had a big cluster of um, collision based injuries in the summer uh, that put us behind the eight ball. And then over in the west, we've been probably twelve to twenty four months behind the rest of the country with COVID. So unfortunately, we got wiped out during the first half of the year and um, you know one, one particular game is well a couple of games now we've had to activate contingency list players because of the, the health and uh, injury status of our players so since that point in time um, we're slowly starting to get some numbers back and get some continuity with some, mm. some games played but for a big period of time there we just haven't been able to get our players um, consistently out on the park so that's not an excuse. It's really more of a reason. We've been disappointed with our performances, mate. There's no, there's no doubt about that. We're, we're really digging in hard to get the work done to, to return to a competitive four quarter team. Mm. Fourteen injuries as you sit there. There's five ankles, three hammies, two knees. I won't go through them all. You did mention something there. I'll, I'll just take up on. You, you said you, you, you had a lot of collision injuries during the pre-season. Did you train differently, or they were just damn unlucky? There was a couple that were just truly unlucky. So um, Campbell Chester, our first pick, as an example, uh, in the in the draft last year, highly regarded young player, um, just got sort of slightly pushed in an aerial contest, landed awkwardly. We thought he'd just rolled his ankle, mate, and he's out for 12 months. Mm. So, um, yeah, so we, it just ended up being like that. Or Jamie Cripps went to tackle someone and tore it, and rather than just getting a, a cork in the chest or, in, or hurting his shoulder, he tore his pec. So off the bone sort of thing. So we were just we were just unfortunate um, in that period of time, and then um, yeah, things started to stack up on us from there. But yeah, it's by by all by all means, it certainly um, wasn't ideal. But we still have a lot of work to do to become the team we want to become. Mm. When's Nick Nack back? Oh, I just think you're such a better team with him in that in your team. Obviously, yeah, he's a, he's a great leader on and off the field. Nick, you know, he has a huge presence. No doubt opposition would like to keep an eye on where he is because you certainly don't want to get hit by Nick at full pace. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'd hope to see him back in um, the next five five weeks, I would think, five mm. to six weeks, um, recovering from a knee injury. But, yeah, he's, he's super important for us, um, what he brings to the team and what he brings each game. Just for an SA flavour and out of interest, where's young Lukey Edwards at? Yeah, Lukey... Um, 
Yeah, unfortunately, Luke was placed on the inactive list a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Luke has had some issues in and around uh, OP and his grinds. Oh, and we came to the point where the decision was either do we keep pushing him to play um, towards the back end of the year and get him up for a game or two, or do we give it the best chance to settle, um, put him up on ice for a little bit, and then hopefully give him a chance to fully recover and have a have a full season for us. We're, um, we're big fans of Luke. Um, He's a, he's a terrific young man. He obviously has got great pedigree um, with his dad um, and so on. But we're, we're just, we just really want to see Luke um, fully fit Good. and being able to execute as best he can because, uh, yeah, we're a big rap for the kid. Well, he's at the level. He had some ripping games last year, and I've got a bit of invested interest in there too. Hey, you selected um, Jai Cully, a mid-year rookie draft. I had a look. The last time you selected a lad with dreadlocks ended up okay. His name was Nick Nat. Tell us about him, Gab, <laughs> Jay. Yeah, so Jay arrived today, actually. We flew, flew him from um, from home into Adelaide. So he arrived today. He met the players um, this morning and he came over to Adelaide Oval with us. So he had a kick on the ground. And, yeah, he's a big, strong boy. Uh, watching his vision, obviously, I haven't seen him play live yet and hope to do so next week in the waffle. But, um, yeah, he, he comes across. He's uh, got good power around the contest. He's... Wins, wins ball in close really well, nice and clean with his hands, and he's got the ability to go forward. So, yeah, we were uh, we feel like we're really fortunate to add Jay, Jay to our uh, to our list, and yeah, hoping he can come home with us on Sunday, uh, Saturday night, settle into Perth, and then play play next weekend in our waffle team. Brilliant. Um, the waffles like the Sandful, um, proud competitions. The they're more than feeder clubs. They're the backbone of the state. Do you have an understanding as a club, this is West Coast with the waffle, that you do the best you can not to draft local lads that end up playing against the team you draft them from in the waffle? Uh, no, not, not so much that. I mean, our waffle clubs are very supportive. They have been uh, throughout the entire history of West Coast, actually, where the players have gone back to the eight or nine club, depending on what went before Peel was introduced, go. went back there and played. Um, we we play our waffle, in the waffle competition ourselves. Um, whilst we have some tight restrictions around us, and they've been hugely impacted by our AFL availability, there's a lot of us within the club that have got close links to the waffle. Highly respect the competition and the clubs, and um, yeah, we, we feel like whilst we have different objectives at times, uh, we work well and collaboratively together. Brilliant. Hey, all the best tomorrow. Thanks for your time. Um, yeah, and go the Eags. Oh, I like it. We've changed already. Good on your own. Thank yeah, you, mate. Well, my mum and dad are here and they're listening and they're West Aussies. They've just arrived because mm-hmm. we're going to have a baby. So, Gav, well done. <laughs> Thanks Good for your you. time. And they Thank do you. barrack for the Eagles. They do. Gavin Bell <laughs> from the West Coast Eagles footy boss there. Good you man. can hear it tomorrow. 12.30 right here on 5AA. You could self Mark Bickley and David Wildy, so we look forward to that. Hey, just quickly before we get to a break, 5 o'clock news and Bix on the other side. Good to hear Paul Seedsman speak, courtesy of Channel 7. Um, Seeds still having those ongoing effects from concussion, but he's striving to make a comeback. Yeah, what that looks like, what that light looks like, I'm not sure in terms of a return to play capacity. That's obviously what I'm striving to do. And, and yeah, every stepping stone, even though, you know, the focus at the moment is on health, you know, I've got to get healthy to then be able to train to then be able to return to play so you know the lights there I, th- I think at the end of it I'll be able to be able to manage and do the things that I want to do post football and then you know hopefully we get to a position where I, where I can continue playing and finish off my career here at the uh, at the Adelaide Footy Club. Another year to go that is just a, a sad um, reality of a collision sport mm. and that we're all built differently and he gets migraines. He he yeah. he just is really suffering. He's got to walk around um, protecting his eyes from the light, a- a- and he's right. He he's going to have a family. That's he's right. going to live happily ever after. He, he needs his head for that. And let's hope he gets himself right. And footy isn't the most important thing. Certainly no. when you get to your twilight of your career. But what a disappointment for him personally. Yeah. Had his career best year last year. All Should have been in the All Australian team. Yep. Should have been in it, but he wasn't. And now he's got concussion. Before we go to Sam, Sam, there's a sip and save text that I've just had a look at and I've gone, yeah, I agree with this. Just watching 5AA Facebook online is Leith Forrest <laughs> washing his top lip. What's up? It's from Richard. What is on your top lip? No, that's just, you know what it is. I, you forget. Looks when, like a Mexican. Well, that, you forget when you're on TV, or not TV, but you're on a, on a camera. You, you know yeah. what it's like. You don't shave and you just go, oh, I'll be fine. No Your name's Sanchez. No Hello, Sam. <laughs> Hello, how are you? 
Did you dump that? No. Nah. No. Nah. Hello, Sam. Hello. Yeah, Sam, Hello. we're here. I don't know what Leith's doing. There's something wrong with his lip, but we'll, yep. we'll plough on. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a list of five players that were selected in 2016. Uh -huh. It was the same year that Jack Graham was selected for Richmond. Mm -hmm. And Jack Graham was selected about pick number 54. Okay. That year, we selected Gallucci, pick number 15, Signorello, Aholke, Himmelberg, and Davis. Yeah, all by those five all, all players. By, yep, keep going. Out of, out of those five players, three have been delisted, mm -hmm. and only one really plays a little bit Himmelberg. regular. Yep. Yes. And he hasn't got another contract yet for this year. No. So is Justin Reed in charge of the selecting, or is that... He's the risk manager. So his, his ultimate goal is to steer the recruitment and the coaching group and give feedback onto what list gaps they have and build the list to a premiership list. He's also got to balance the books as who gets paid what, who gets the contracts. He would he would drive that as the chair of that and saying he deserves a two year, a three year, they'd negotiate it. But but Sam, what I do know about all clubs with list management, it's a collective. So Matty Nix is on it. There'd be a board member on it. Let's say it's Rue. There might be another independent board member on it. There would be the recruiting staff. It's an absolute collective, Sam. So you can't point the finger at one person no. at any club. I mean, everyone used to get into Silvani or, or get into... Who's the bloke out at um, Dororo? Dororo. Adrian Dororo. Now, at Essen, because you look at their list, it is a yep. collective. It is. And what a club can't do, Sam, and this is any club, and it's including Crows, and they've had a, a couple of these. You can't have a bad year. No. You just and that was a shocking year. Unfortunately, and you look at Jordan Gallucci at fifteen, and no disrespect to Jordan, but the players taken mm. after him that Adelaide could have picked: Todd Marshall, Sam Pal Pepper, Tim English, yeah. Will Haywood, Jordan Ridley, Ben Long, Brennan Parfitt, Zach Fisher, Shy Bolton. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to sit on the fence there, Sam. If there, and I've said this a number of times, if there was one department I wouldn't want to be in at the Crows right now, that's recruitment and list management. Mm. Mark Bickley, next. I'm Cathy Nagel, the Chief Executive Officer of Western Hospital Henley Beach. Our Western Hospital GP clinic is comprehensive and integrated into Western Hospital to serve our community's needs. Our 10 GPs all have special interests and care for you in our unique environment located within the hospital. Though our clinic is non-bulk billing, this healthcare hub caters to various needs and our patients can be referred directly to our hospital and specialists. Visit westernhospitalgp.com.au My match? I just want low maintenance, generous and smart. Well, meet the People's Choice Everyday Living Account. An online account with no monthly admin fees and digital wallet access means more time to do the things you love. Plus, when you sign up and make your first deposit, we'll match it up to $100. Because we're for your perfect match. Learn more online in branch on 131182. People's Choice. Terms and conditions apply and available on application. Before acquiring this product, you should consider whether it's appropriate for you. People's Choice Credit Union is referred to as People's Choice. Good cobber of mine through 5AA's Italo, TJM Equipped. He and his wife own it, TJMSA, and it's one of the best ways to see SA is through the dusty windscreen of your four-wheel drive. But if you want to get there, you want to be TJM Equipped. It is a must. Safe to say, SA have hit the road more than ever in the past couple of years, and once you get a taste for it, you just keep on coming on back. Family behind TJMSA, Italo and his lovely wife, they've been behind the wheel for, for 10 years. Italo, 10 years since purchasing the business in 2012, but TJM has been keeping SA wheels turning off-road since 1990. So before you hit the road, make TJM the first stop on your great adventure. Safety and comfort is always the priority. They've got bull bars, suspension, snorkels, camping gear, roof racks, driving lights. There's plenty there. So get down to TJM and get some mud under your fenders. Visit TJM, Nailsworth and Clavelli Park. Online, on DAB Digital Radio and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide's 5AA.
hours tonight, a low of 11. With the 5 o'clock news, I'm Michaela Kamare. New Mitsubishi Triton with 10-year warranty, 10-year capped price servicing at Agostino Mitsubishi, Nailsworth and Elizabeth. There's been a positive response to the Malinowskis government's first state budget. A record $2.4 billion will be plowed into health, funding for more hospital upgrades, beds and staff. Bernadette Mulholland from the Salaried Medical Officers Association says it's desperately needed. No surprises that we are welcoming those budget initiatives. They're really great. We still have a hurdle of getting over in winter and finding a workforce that will support the budget and the opening of the new beds. But I'd give them a 8 out of 10 for their first budget. There's also extra money for more paramedics and new ambulance stations. Leah Watkins from the Ambulance Union has given it a 10 out of 10. We're pretty wrapped to see the significant investment in the ambulance service and across the health system more broadly. This is the single biggest investment in the ambulance service that we've seen in our state's history. The federal government has lodged its submission to the independent umpire to boost the minimum wage. Labor is recommending the Fair Work Commission lift workers' pay in line with the cost of living. Inflation currently sits at 5.1%. The federal opposition says the energy minister must reach out to Australia's peak gas suppliers to fix a shortage. Cold weather outages at coal-fired power stations and global factors have sent electricity prices soaring. Chris Bowen is yet to talk to companies about the current situation. The opposition's Angus Taylor says he needs to do so. They want to know that the government is supporting them to get more supply out. And it's uncanny how they are able to find more supply when you are on their side. He has to pick up the phone. It's that simple. He hasn't even done it. It's a hot tip for him. Pick up the phone. The Foreign Minister says Australia is both listening to and acting on the con concerns of our Pacific partners. Penny Wong has spent the past two days in Samoa and Tonga selling the federal government's stronger climate targets. She's also promised to ensure greater trade and security cooperation. Addressing media in Tonga, Senator Wong says she's determined to strengthen ties. We were elected with a very clear position that we would bring new energy and more resources to our relationship with the Pacific. Uh, the Australian people have voted for a government that is supportive of more ambitious action on climate change and that is what we will do. The Queen is taking a short break from her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. After the first day's events, the monarch will be sitting out the service of Thanksgiving today. Europe correspondent Kerry Ann Greenbank says Her Majesty experienced some discomfort during a busy day of festivities. Late yesterday, Buckingham Palace did confirm that while Queen Elizabeth greatly enjoyed the celebration, so the trooping, the colour, and the fly past yesterday, she did experience a little bit of discomfort, so she has decided not to attend today's service. Now tuning to 5AA Sport. Round 12 of the AFL gets underway tonight with the Western Bulldogs and Geelong at Marvel Stadium. The Crows play West Coast tomorrow at Adelaide Oval while Port have the bye this weekend. Boston Celtics have taken a 1-0 lead over Golden State Warriors in the best of seven NBA finals. And tennis world number one Iga Sviatek is on the verge of history. If she wins the French Open final, she'll meet Venus Williams' record of 35 straight wins. Now checking 5AA traffic. Complete windscreens, the trusted South Australian name for car window tinting in Adelaide for over 40 years. At Power Hills West, there's a smash with a car fire, Bridge Road at Beefield Road. Dry Creek, another collision on the Salisbury Highway, it's near the north-south motorway. And another collision, this one's at Powerfield Gardens, Shepherdson Road near the Salisbury Highway. McGill Burst, Watermain, Pitfield Road near McGill Road. And we've got cameras to look out for Angle Vale Road, Angle Vale and Hillier Road at Evanston. The Michael Hill sale is now on. Find something special for you or treat a loved one and enjoy great savings. Limited time only. Don't miss out. Hurry into Michael Hill today. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Now the 5AA forecast. Get the Toyota forklift advantage. Visit toyotamaterialhandling.com.au Showers tonight, a low of 11. Showers becoming windy tomorrow, 15. Sunday showers, 13. And Monday showers continuing, 14. Right now it's 13 degrees. Now let's hear what's happening on Nine News Tonight. Is your flu jab really free? Why it'll pay to check that you won't be stung to be protected. 
The major shake-up to the minimum wage, which could boost your pay. See the stunning pictures from the Queen's Jubilee celebrations. Why 15 cent bags are a thing of the past at a major supermarket. And a key crow's hope for a comeback amid concussion concerns. I'm Brenton Raglis. See the full story on Nine News tonight at six. At Lindley's Retirement Living, we create places to live well. That's why our retirement villages are designed with your well-being in mind. From friendly neighbours and social activities to surroundings that inspire an active life, you'll discover the joy of belonging to a community that cares. It's more than just somewhere to live. It's a lifestyle that supports you to thrive. Retirementbylendlease.com.au Your place to live well. Guys, how long does silence have to last before it's awkward? This long? How about this? Ask a female colleague, because for Australian women, harassment and casual misogyny in the workplace is still being met with silence, leaving them feeling uncomfortable and unsupported. Find your voice by searching bethechange.com.au. What's for dinner? Try Cole's One Pan Bolognese Pasta Recipe. Made with five ingredients in 25 minutes. Serves four for just $4 per serve. It's one of over 100 recipes at coles.com.au. Coles, value the Australian way. This is Rowie's Sports Show. Stephen Rowe and Lee Forrest. Seven minutes after five, big second hour of the show on the way. Thanks to our great mates at the Barrow Hotel Group. We've got $300 to give away with our mystery moment. Good luck winning that one. Brian Taylor will join us with the, well, the re-edition of Roaming Brian tonight on Channel 7. And Marco Bello will join us from the Adelaide Crows. But each and every Friday, Mark Bickley joins us thanks to Jarvis Toyota. You can rediscover the road in the all-new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 at Jarvis Toyota, South Road, Clove Valley Park. Mark Bickley, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you guys? What happened to his thing? Oh, it just caught me off guard. Do you know what? Our caught com- me off guard. Our, com- <laughs> our complete computer system has frozen. So oh. I just thought I'd sneak Is that, that in. Is that an there. excuse? Nobody would notice. Nah. Sam's going to well, come It is a bit here. chilly outside, so yeah. it's no surprise, really, yeah. that it might have oh. frozen. And, and Leith, in radio, you don't, Bix, you don't re-say mm. the area, you just let it go, so that was B-grade by me, sorry Lee. <laughs> that's okay, that's why I just introduced, Ma- that's why I introduced Mark and just said hello yeah. without yeah. anyone noticing. But it threw but us. Yeah, no, sorry. We, we, we're used to we're dealing just... with someone that never makes a mistake, Lee. Uh, move on. It's that top lip. Number 26, <laughs> Mark Bix. Big Lou. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Bix, how are you? I'm good, thank you, Stephen, how are you? Can we start with the mid-year rookie draft, uh, and we'll start with the Crows, they yep. selected Glenelg's Brett Turner. Yeah, uh, it was interesting because he's definitely got some attributes uh, that Adelaide need. Uh, One is he's got some burst away speed out of stoppage. I was actually at the game. He played against Adelaide and had 38 disposals and kicked four goals. He could not have been more impressive. So clearly he he caught the eye that day. And, And... it's interesting because Adelaide have got a lot of that size of midfield. Mm. He'd be, he's a tick over. See Schomburg. Mm. So you've got Schomburg, you've got Pevler, uh, you know, you've got Matt Crouch. Mm. So, but what happened that day? I just I went back and had a look. Pevler, Hakeley, Schomburg all played that day, and would have had, you know, high teens, mm. maybe low twenties. Mm. This bloke touched them up mm. and, and and add that Luke Partington into that. Luke Partington had forty that day. Yeah. <laughs> this was yeah. and, and and it wasn't. It wasn't a 15-goal hiding. Crows were four goals up at half time, mm. and then they won all three quarters bar the third quarter. So clearly... Uh, yeah, but if you played that game 10 times, Brett Turner's not having 38 and kicking four against Schomburg. Well... In my opinion. I don't know. Like they played pretty, Both those guys played pretty well. And, and yeah. I guess it shows the capability of yes. what he's yeah. able to do. Yeah. What he's got, he's got, like I said, burst away speed. He's got really quick hands. He's got a bit of sideways movement. But here's the big one. He's a goal-kicking midfielder mm. in terms of gets forward. You know, you know some guys just are goal-kicking midfielders. And Cripps has sort of moved that way this year. Adelaide's midfielders very rarely kick goals. Mm. You know, like when was the last time Rory Laird kicked a goal? You can mm. count it and Matt Crouch. You know, like so they they accumulate the footy, they get it, but they don't hit you on the scoreboard. I, I guess some people would be surprised that uh, Josh Carmichael, who is a bit taller, he's one eighty nine centimeters, so he's that sort of I think his nickname's the bull, so he's that mm. bigger, bigger body player. That's uh, why I, I was I was convinced they were going to go for mm. it. Only 22 years of age, too. Yeah. We know that Turner's 25. but Played state footy, played at the level. 
Yeah, so once again, we, w- we won't know mm. what's the, the best decision until no. probably 18 months' yeah. time. Because both of them, you would think, w- are able to come in in the next you know, 6 to 12 months and, and show mm. what they're capable of. Because they've got mature bodies, they're yeah. at the level in terms of physically. So I think everyone... Or a lot of Crows fans have got one eye on, on Josh Carmichael at Collingwood and seeing how he unfolds. Now, in the end, that's what recruiters do. They make calls mm. on people. And if Josh Carmichael goes on to play six games and Brett Turner plays 100, well, everyone will be patting the Crows recruiters on the back. But yeah. if it's flipped around, they won't. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly right. You've got to let it take its turn. And yesterday I said congratulations wholeheartedly to Brett Turner. The three days before that, I said I'd be absolutely gobsmacked if they went with Brett on the other Reason for that is he he's injured. He hasn't played mm. for six weeks. He's still probably two or three away, um, and and he's he's no different in my eyes than a than a Schomburg or a Peddler. He's exactly them. Now we'll get to see that he'll train that. You know he might mm. be a little bit quicker, um, but I think it's someone like a Schomburg would be mighty peed off if a bloke came in from the sample and jump straight over the top of him when he's been developed for what well, he's nearly playing close to 30, 40 games. Shawnee, but here's the thing. Pick yourself. I promise you, if I could say anything to Harry Schomburg, I'd say, if you had 38 and 4, yeah. I reckon you wouldn't You're have to do yourself. that very often, yeah, would you? That's to, right. And, and if someone's able to do that consistently at sample level, and that's been the critique, I guess, yes. of, of many of the, the people that play in the Crow side, even blokes like Miller, who came in, you know, he's coming in off 18 possessions or... Modest you know, numbers. Yeah, modest numbers. Uh, Hately was probably the only one, and of course, Riley O'Brien, who just dominated. Mm. Matt, Matt Crouch, you could argue, had two weeks where he's 30-plus disposals. So so those guys go back and are just too good for it. But there's been a whole host of them that just aren't yeah. aren't able to dominate at that level, which says, well, what chance are they of becoming mm. really great AFL players if they're not really dominant at that lower level just mm. yet? So anyway... I had a stat from round 1 to round 11. It's now round 12. 17 Crows players have been dropped, mm. selected and dropped. That's a lot, isn't it? it so is. they're still working out their team. Um, Port got a 203-centimetre ruck slash forward from WA. Thoughts? Yeah, that's an interesting one because um, well, they've got Lysette, they've got Hayes, and they've got a younger sort of project player in uh, Dante Vicentini. So there's three ruckmen, yes. and now they've gone with a fourth. fourth. So... So to give some comparison, Adelaide have two. Adelaide have Strawn and mm. Riley O'Brien. So what that says to me is, is Lysette, is there, is there some question marks over his durability? Today he was listed as seven to eight weeks away from returning. Mm. So there's a little bit about that. There's some durability. Is there a question mark where, you know, everyone thought, Hayes, he's been on the list for five years. He's a dual All-Australian youngster. He'll come in and we'll just see him get better and better and better. And Which we haven't really, have we? No, I don't think Without he's... being too harsh on the that's land. That's right, yeah. yeah. And so I think that's why they've probably thought we, yeah. we maybe need another, another little project. insurance policy yeah. just in case uh, we are good enough to make mm. the finals and, and Lysette's not quite there and we're going to come up against teams that, that may have a number of ruckmen. Let's turn our attention to the game tomorrow and let's start with an absolute positive. The third debutant, Patty, they call him Pistol. Pistol. Pennell. It's good, isn't it? Well, it is. Uh, I think we just all love people getting their opportunity to, to realise what has been a big part of their lives and part of their aspirations to get to AFL level. So he gets an opportunity to do that. The 253rd player to represent the Adelaide Footy Club. So that's a huge honour. Uh, and I think I'm just looking forward to look. He's got, actually got a weapon, so he's got a he's got that kick. That's that's his weapon. Mm. So there's going to be that aspect to it. But he's a Caleb Daniel type of kicker. Hits the twenty five, mm, never misses. But the the flip side is is going to be if you're playing defence, you've got to be able to, to defend. defend as well. So I don't think anyone doubts that Luke Brown has the defensive capabilities. I haven't seen enough of Paddy mm. to see whether he can defend. He's only one on one. He's only a smallish player. Yeah. What would he be? One seventy three or four? Yeah. I think. He so is. he's not going to stand Toby Green. Would he stand a Charlie Cameron? He'd stand a Tyson Stengel. Let's mm. go through the small forwards. Would he stand a Connor Rosie type, Motlock type? At, but and, th- and this is what, what I mean. Yeah. You, you mentioned Tyson Stengel. Use that as yeah. an example because yeah. similar sort of physical so, attributes. Yeah. Does he have the lockdown capability? Because we're hearing right. he's an attacking type player. And when Brody Smith started, Brody Smith and he will say this couldn't defend to save himself. So what ends up happening is teams will take you to the goal square and mm. say, "Well, you can't defend." What Play happens? me one on one. Yeah, and we'll, we'll all get out. So what happens if he plays on a? Uh, you know, a Willie Rioli or a, mm. I don't know, some of those sort of 
half, uh, you know, players that can mark. Very clever in the air. That is going to be the challenge for Liam them. Ryan. Liam Ryan. Oh, yeah. Once again, I think they'll be able to Walters. manipulate it mm. around enough because they want him in the back half for his kicking ability. But once again, I haven't seen enough of him to say, is he able to defend? And that's going to be the question. Caleb Daniel is able to combine it. I know one of people want to compare him to Caleb Daniel, but let's be honest, Caleb Daniel's a one in a million. Mm. <laughs> really, in terms of his his uh, decision making, his um, his sure handedness, he mm. doesn't make any mistakes. And when Caleb went down to half back, he was already a premiership player. He'd already played as a small mm. forward. He was two or three years into his into his AFL career, so there's an element of composure about it. Hard playing your first game if they're asking you to be the kicker off half back and set up play. Mm. You're playing your first game and there's a bit of heat on. So, mm. like How I say, you going Stanley and Ryan, mate. Good luck with that. <laughs> so, but then, once again, that's if he's playing half back. But I assume yeah, that's where he's right. going to line up. But Chase Jones may be a bit stiff. I thought he might have yeah. just jumped straight back in there, but we'll see. They might want to see him play in the Sanflin bleed him as a midfielder, which is what he was recruited to do. Before we go to the break, we've got Marco Bello from the Crows. You can put all those questions to him, but I want to ask you this one specifically. Texas back, you little bloody but a mm. Fogs off his best game for probably two years. In actual mm. fact, I'd say second best game at AFL level in 50. The other one was West Coast where he kicked Kick five. Mm. Kicked five. Can it work? Yeah, look, I, th- I think it can, but I think what you have to do now is you, you really want to promote uh darcy and so and and that might be slightly at the expense of taylor where taylor Mm. might play a bit higher up the ground um and and you say to darcy we we want you to to play exactly with the same mindset as you did last week and and i think with an aggression last week and an urgency mm, that's it and so you can still do that no that's a mindset that's got nothing to do with who else is running out there but it's more to the point when someone lifts up their eyes, they're running through the middle of the ground, are you demanding it? Are you mm. in a position where you are capturing the attention? Now, what happens is when Taylor Walker gets there, he probably ends up getting in your vision, and he's mm. the one you end up kicking to, even if maybe Fogarty is leading the other way. So I wonder whether they may, whether Taylor may venture a little bit higher up the mm. ground and just see if you can keep rolling on with yeah. Darcy Fogarty. But guess what? The weather's going to be putrid anyway. Yeah, it's going it to be, be pouring with rain. So maybe there and won't be a whole lot of sort of great ball movement. Mm. It'll be more territory game. Take that up with Marco Bello after the break. So according to the Crows website, Paddy Parnell is 177 centimetres. Oh, well, he's a, so he's, he's a, a little taller. 71 kilos, and tomorrow he will be presented his jumper by Chris Groom. Groovy! The mighty number 50. So how good is that? Groovy so. didn't wear 37. No. Trent Henschel did. Ian Callanan Ian Callan and Nutter Nutter's did. down in Tassie. Yeah. Mm. I think Adam did. Slab Sleever well, did. That, that would fit if he had Nutter's Guernsey, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Slab Sleever? Well, he yeah. had magic hands. Where is Slab's? That was an interesting story, Adam Saliba. I reckon he played four Crows games and then played in a State of Origin he game did. and then played about two or three games mm. after that. There wasn't Cold many. hero. Mm. Cold and we, hero, we won Adam that Saliba. State of Origin game. Marco Bello, after we check the traffic for your drive home. At Blair, got a smash on Blair Road near Windy Point. Power Hills West, another collision with a car fire bridge road at Bifford Road. Smash at Dry Creek, Salisbury Highway near the North South Motorway and Parafield Gardens, another collision. This one's on Shepherdson Road near Salisbury Highway. Seeing the lads at Seacliff with Urgent Electric City works there, Brighton Road near Seacombe Road, and keep your eye out for a camera, Main North Road at Mawson Lakes. Enjoy a chicken meal like no other from a Porto. Whole succulent chicken, flame grilled and basted with your choice of sauce and two delicious sides, all for just $24.95. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Keep up to date with state politics with Adelaide's own King of Spin, Matthew Abraham. Thursday mornings from 7.30 with David and Will. Thanks to your local Mitre 10. Friendly service, expert advice, quality brands at great prices. That's mighty helpful. Mitre 10. Hello. Frank Walker from National Tiles. With travel restrictions lifted, our National Tiles buying team is back in Italy and Spain on a mission. To buy the best. The very best. Yes, the absolute very best quality tiles from the very best European manufacturers exclusively for National Tiles. So for the absolute best European quality National Tiles for your home at Australia's very best everyday lowest prices, you must go to nationaltiles.com.au now. Hey, it's Callum here. It's not by chance that Edward Mazza is located bang on South Road. They wanted to make it easy to get your car serviced, any make or model. Make a pit stop at Edwardstown Mazda. It's got a big 
edwardstownmazda.com.au Well, this weekend is a super weekend at your local cheapest chips. It means a great opportunity to take advantage of the cheap, cheap prices. Maybe you want to clean up the backyard, watch and listen to the crows tomorrow, then do it the rest of the week. You'll find 20% off garden power tools, lawn mowers, chainsaws, hedge trimmers and line trimmers. If your gutters are overflowing with the rains, there's 20% off a range of ladders too. Four steps, 79.20. Five steps, 87.20. And large six steps are just $111.20. There's also heaps more in store, including the Pranetti grooming products at 30% off. For more Super Weekend deals, check out the back page of tomorrow's Cheapest Chips catalogue or just head to your local Cheapest Chips. The absolute final deadline in the Hospital Research Foundation Home Lottery is in one week. Imagine waking up to luxury every day in a fully furnished Scott Salisbury home at Henley Beach. Plus, you can stop dreaming and start living with $1 million in cash. Make the dream yours and purchase a ticket before it's too late. Join the fight for cures, better treatments and improved care. Visit homelottery.com.au License M14166. Don't know if you've noticed, but we're already coming up on the end of financial year. I know, right? Well, you install at Kitchens is leaning into it with a huge end of financial year sale. So stop dreaming and start renovating. Custom-sized and pre-assembled cabinetry means big savings without compromising on quality and style. Visit the showrooms at Modbury, Glandor, Norwood, Lonsdale and Churchill Centre or try you install its free 3D online design planner. You install at Kitchens, the complete DIY kitchen solution. Conditions apply. Hey, it's Jody Oddie. Join me on July 23rd for Samri's Bright Walk, a powerful one-night challenge raising half a million dollars for life-saving research. Bright Walk will last a few hours, but its impact will last generations. Starting in the cold, dark night, Bright Walk will test your grit, but you'll be inspired by bright lights along the secret path, culminating at the Cheese Grater building. Dare yourself to help Samri's brightest minds discover health breakthroughs. Join me and register at samrybright.org.au. Walker Crash Repairs. For easy insurance repairs on your caravan, get it fixed right with Walker Crash Repairs. This is Rowie Sport Show. 23 minutes after five, Mark Bickley is here thanks to Jarvis Toyota. Crows and Eagles tomorrow from 1.15. Looks like it might be windy and wet. It'll be live and local on 5AA. And on the line is Crows Head of Development, Marco Bello. Marco, welcome. Evening, Rowie. How you doing? Mate, we love debutantes. Tell us about Pistol Paddy Parnell. Yeah, little Paddy. Uh, he's the only one of the guys that I can see eye to eye, so I'm a, <laughs> I'm a big fan. Um, he, he just has a dip, the kid. He, um, I heard Bix before speak about you know, his ball use and his short handling. He's got that, but uh, one of the things we've been really pleased with him over over the last uh, probably nine to ten weeks is his physicality and his want to, you know, really want to defend and work hard on that part of his game. So I'm um, looking forward to seeing him out there. It was a great reception from the boys. He got a lot of love, so it goes to show uh, just how much uh, impact he's had in just the year that he's been there. Yeah, clearly really well liked by the, the group. There's no doubt about that. You, you just answered my first question about that ability to defend. He, he takes over from uh, Luke Brown, of course, who's been a real dour stopper. You look there, they've got a couple of... Players that, uh, that 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 can light it up. So he, he first and foremost, as in that back half, you've got to be able to defend. So it's good that he has had that, I guess, apprenticeship or that uh, grounding and be able to do that first and then know when to attack. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you touched on, the defenders first and foremost is to defend. So um, you know, obviously we've got a, a back six and there's a system that that's uh, part of that defensive mechanism. But you need to be able to win the one on ones and and sometimes 2v1s and sometimes against taller opponents. So um, we've been working with him on that and being able to use his, while well, small frame, he's, you know, he's, he's put on eight or so kilos since he's been there. So we're, we're working on him how to utilise that and, and basically bring the ball to ground. Um, and then he can use his weapons after that. Gee whiz, he's put on eight kilos. He's 71 kilos now. He could have almost ridden the top weight when he moved over oh. here. <laughs> Six, he could have been 63. It, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, tell us about how you go about uh, preparing for a game, particularly when there's all this talk about, oh, it's going to be pouring with white rain, it's going to be really wet. Uh, does it just turn into a, a slog and you have to win the contested footy, which I know you're trying to do anyway? Or do you say, you know what, we still want to be able to use the ball, we still want to play a certain style? Yeah, it's a bit of both, Bix. I mean, obviously, we, we pride ourselves on that contested style of football, so that we won't shy away from it. And it's also now the ability to 
to use the ball and and uh, you know if we have to we'll, we'll obviously take ground the old fashioned football mm. um for a hundred years it probably doesn't uh stray too far away you know it's just keep it simple and um keep it in our forward line for as long as we can to till we get the opportunity so we've got to embrace it we've got to you know enjoy the day and you know as a kid my little fella's just about to run out uh here at Kingswood Oval, and he's looking forward to the weather. He's looking mm. forward to getting <laughs> down and dirty. So we've got to do the same. We've, we've got to uh, embrace that and enjoy it. When you look through their lineup, Gaff, Redden, Kelly, Shuey, Cripps, Kennedy, McGovern, you know, you just read all those names out. Hearn, there's plenty of quality in there. I know they haven't played anywhere near it, but it's just one of these games where it's a little bit unnerving, isn't it, seeing the quality there and, and um, knowing they haven't performed, yet they've got potential to. Absolutely, yeah. You, you touched on a numerous amount there. I think they still got, jeez, uh, I think when I looked today, nine or so, you know, premiership players. So there's, there's some quality there, and and the guys that are in there as well, uh, um, season campaigners. They, they've been around for a long time, so they, they, they'll have a bit of pride. They'll they'll, they'll come here thinking that um, you know they can put a, a good uh, a good show on and. Um, we need to we need to match that and not only match it, it beat them. So this will be a great contest. We, we're looking forward to this challenge. What did you take out of last week's game? What was the the number one positive from last week's uh, performance against Geelong? Oh look, uh, I mean again the ability for us, yeah, you know, probably first quarter didn't go our way. We we kicked ourselves out of it. That's um, that's been talked about a lot. But then our ability to get back into the game. So um, we've shown that uh, you know whilst we went down by a few goals there. By that third quarter, we got it back to, to 14-odd points or maybe even 9-odd points mm, there at eight, some stage. Yeah. So, yeah, 8 points. There you go. So that's that's something to take out of it, that um, this group now just trusts our system and no matter what, if we stick to that, at some point it will swing in our favour. So that's something now we need to just do for four quarters, obviously. We were discussing Darcy Fogarty and, and his mindset looked a lot different last week. It looked like he had some urgency. It looked like he had a bit of authority in that front half. How do you maintain that when Taylor Walker comes back in? Is that something you have to talk about or is that just something that more of an attitude thing that you're hoping that just comes pretty much every week from now on? Yeah, well, probably not so much hoping, but we have been putting a bit of work, and he has put a lot of work into into that mindset going into games. So as you touched on, maybe previously it was, geez, I'll let these other guys around me with mm. a bit more seniority and a bit more presence to do the work, whereas now he's working on that, no, no, I'm, I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, I'm ugly enough to, to put myself in the right spots to, to impact games more often, so... Um, him and, and Raleigh have been doing a, a mountain of work in terms of you know leading patterns, where to be, um, and when he gets his opportunities. It's a one-on-one -on -one style of game now, especially in, in the forward half. So uh, he just needs to compete for harder and for longer, and no doubt that that'll start to show up a little bit more. You normally send a number up to the contest as a rule. Hill from half back cut the crows up. Round 10, he was the free. Last week, Stewart, I don't think I've seen a game like that across half-back. Um, Eagles have a bloke called Bunger Hearn who uses it elitely, and there's another one, Jeremy McGovern, who tends to drop off. It's not going to be three from three this week, is it, Marco? Geez, I, I hope not. I hope not, Rowie. Yeah, no, look, we, we obviously looked at that, and um, you know, our, our style of play, as you said, once we get one up, we're um, very, very good around the football. We, we've probably just got to now just settle a little bit more and not just rush and, and hurry up and get that ball inside 50, even though I said probably five minutes ago that that might be the game style because of the weather. We, we need to make sure that our forward has time enough to, to re-engage and get back there, and that's a little bit of ball use. That's a little bit of running patterns. Um, you know, obviously, the old if there is a plus one there, just rounding him up a little bit more and... So there are other things in place, and we just need to do that a little bit better, more consistently over the, that period of time. No, Butsy, we know that. Sadly, concussion. Uh, Tom Duday, he, is he categorically fit and OK to go, and Nick Murray as well, your other two defenders? Yeah, 100%. Those Good. guys did a uh, did a little session today, and they got through it, and, and they're keen as mustard. So, yeah, there's, there's two big boys that we need, and, um, yeah, they'll, they'll be fit and firing. Where that favouritism with pride, Marco, tomorrow. You're playing a team that was bottom, well, is bottom, last seven games, average losing margin, 79 points. It'd be nice to go into the bye with four in the tin tank. Thanks for your time. Uh, absolutely. Thanks, Rowie. Appreciate it. Cheers, Rick. Yeah, see you, Marco. Marco, Marco Bella. Bella. Yeah. yeah. Head of development. So, um, 
Yeah. Well, they're the facts. They're playing a bottom team. Mm. The last seven games, their average losing margin is 79. You're right. There's nine premiership players in that team. You read mm. that and you go, holy hell. Last week, they got walloped by mm. 100 points. Mm. Tomorrow will be about, not systems for me, it's winning the contested ball and grit, mm. the conditions. It's going to be windy and wet. That's it. Who's going to stay in the fight the longer? Exactly right. Now, <clears throat> Adelaide... have to be... They're yeah. not, Adelaide aren't flying, by the way. They're, they've lost their last five, so it's not, you know, seven, well, five. Well, yeah, but our average losing margin is only 20, I know, 22 I know that, points. But I, I think it's some, not 79. I think sometimes, though, when you're a bottom team, you think, Phew, okay. Well, here's a chance. Maybe we are. <laughs> you but, telling me we're a chance. But I, I think Adelaide, uh, you know, normally we say they're a scrapping team. I would have thought if the weather was fine. I saw enough last week against Adelaide when they put some chains together. They actually, I they impressed me a couple of times last week where I thought they used it pretty well. So I think if it's a if it's a scrappy, wet game and it's low scoring, for the first time ever, all of a sudden you're in the third quarter and you're two goals down, you, you know, you might find something if you're the West Coast Eagles. So if you're Adelaide and you're it's... You're tipping them, the Crows. Of course I am, yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, I don't think they want it to be an absolute... No. Mud fest, sloshy, slippery, you know, seven goals to five type mm. of game. That doesn't suit Adelaide at all. No. Bix, well done. We'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Indeed, we will. And uh, if you want to rediscover the road, you can do it in the all-new Toyota Land Cruiser 300 at Jarvis Toyota, South Road, Clovelly Park. It's the 3.3-litre twin-turbo V6 diesel engine, the most powerful diesel Land Cruiser yet from Jarvis Toyota, South Road, Clovelly Park. Thank you, Bix. Coming up tonight, it is the Cats and the Dogs. And after the game on Channel 7, Roaming Brian. BT. Brah. 5AA Breakfast. The Treasurer of South Australia, Stephen Mulligan, live in the 5AA Breakfast studio. How hard is it to make confident predictions about what's going to happen with the economy right now? Oh, it is difficult. There's no question about that. Is it your ambition to start paying down debt? Is that something you want to start doing over the course of this four-year period? Informing Adelaide. Look, I'd love to, Will, but I think the reality is to finish the new Women's and Children's Hospital, to finish the North-South Corridors, we're going to have to keep borrowing more money. 6am weekdays on 5AA. This is Adelaide's 5AA. Good afternoon, I'm Michaela Kamarek. The state government's announced construction of the new Mount Barker Hospital will start in 2024, two years earlier than expected. The federal government has lodged its submission to the independent umpire to boost the minimum wage. The Queen is taking a short break from her Platinum Jubilee celebrations after experiencing discomfort during yesterday's festivities. And round 12 in the AFL gets underway tonight with the Western Bulldogs and Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Now checking 5AA traffic. At Belair, look out for a Smash on Belair Road near Winnie Point. Power Hills West, smash there with a the car fire. Bridge Road at Biffield Road. Dry Creek Collision on the Salisbury Highway near the North South Motorway and Seacliff Urgent Electricity Works. Brighton Road near Seacombe Road. Got extensive delays on Brighton Road as you're heading outbound. Busy at the moment, Prospect Road near Regency Road with cameras Para Road, Evanston and Port Wakefield Road at Waterloo Corner. It's the end of financial year sale at Amart. Save up to 50% on a range of spacious lounges, stylish sofas, quality dining, bedroom and more. Hurry, offers end Tuesday. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA. Showers tonight, a low of 11. Showers becoming windy tomorrow, 16. Right now it's 13 degrees. More news at 6 o'clock and as it happens on 5AA. Five minutes to go and your anytime goal scorer's on the bench. Well, I just cashed out of my same game multi. <laughs> what? It's new. Cash out of your AFL same game multi with Sportsbet. Conditions apply, gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858. Garden Grove is celebrating 40 years of supplying the garden that you want. Thanks to our customers for your continued support. With over 10 acres, Garden Grove has everything you need, from gifts to compost and everything in between to make gardens thrive. Relax at the cafe, be inspired by the nursery and chat to our qualified horticulturalists to make it happen. Garden Grove, the garden that I want. Visit gardengrove.com.au Morning, Dave. Hey, Dave, how's it going? <coughs> That's good. That was Dave before he discovered the incredible fully adjustable Ultramatic bed. Now he gets a great night's sleep and it's reduced his snoring. Dave sleeps like a baby and wakes up like... Morning, all! Beautiful day, isn't it? Ultramatic beds. Truly life-changing. Ultramatic.com.au Introducing the Drive Car of the Year.
The all-new Kia Sportage. Awarded for its new turbo engine that gives you progressive performance. The Kia Sportage has a boldly sculpted sportsback design and soft touch leather interior, making it a natural leader. Kia Sportage, the drive car of the year. To find out more, visit kia.com.au or visit your nearest Kia dealer. Kia, movement that inspires. A walk is an amazing thing. All it really involves is putting one foot in front of the other. But spend a little time doing it and you'll make a big difference to the way you feel. If you can find just 10 minutes a day, that's less than the time it takes to play Bohemian Rhapsody twice, you'll end up in a better place. Even if you only go around the block. A walk can work wonders. So start with 10 minutes today. A message from the Government of South Australia. Five minutes to go and your anytime goal scorer is on the bench. Well, I just cashed out of my same game multi. It, what? It's new. Cash out of your AFL same game multi with Sportsbet. Conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858. Scrape your caravan, walk a crash repairs, an RAA approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sport Show. 23 minutes to 6 each and every week we catch up with one of Rowie's pals thanks to Parafield Airport Liquor at his home of the hardest to find wines, beer and spirits. Remember, life's better with your pals. Looking forward to this former VFL star. He was Coleman medalist, seven-time club leading goal kicker. He's now Channel 7's number one caller, my favourite, Brian Taylor, or better known as Roaming Brian. He joins us now. BT, welcome. Uh, Rowie, how are you going, mate? What's going on in your world? Oh, I don't know, but God, how many nicknames you got? Bristles, BT, Roaming, Brian, what else? <laughs> Whatever you want, mate. Whatever, <laughs> anything is good. Yeah. Anything is good these days, Look, as long as they're as long as they're mentioning your name at some stage. That's true. Now they're bringing Roaming Brian back. What happened to it? Well, I don't know. It, 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 it was all COVID yes. driven. Rowie, like, so, you know, COVID protocols meant that, for instance, people couldn't come into the room, supporters, uh, families, yeah. um, friends, um, you know, onlookers. So I guess if you take that element out of the rooms, that was a big part of what that mm. was all about, you know, speaking to parents after their sons play their first game or whatever it is, the fans in there, you take that out and you get boring old players, which, you know, you, you probably don't want to do it anyway, so it's, uh, it's not a lot of fun. Are you a... Are you a dentist committee type that writes it down, prepares, or they just say, look, get into the rooms and just free ball, no. so to speak? No, you, you're, you're an ad libber, aren't you? Yeah, I reckon I'm like you. I'm the same. I hate the, the over-preparation of stuff. And so I am, I am definitely, uh, even when I'm calling a game like I notice you are as well, I'm just emotionally tied to the game. The yes. game's up, I'm up. It's down, yeah. I'm probably down a little bit. Yeah. But that, that, that's, that's the way I like to do it, for sure. Yeah. No, we love you doing it. Um, this one's my favourite. Have a listen. A chat with Xavier Dersman. Oh, yes, my girlfriend living I in the back. I thought this might have been your girlfriend over the back. Hey, uh, how romantic is he, by the way? Oh, he's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> he's pretty good. What, what's, the, what's the most romantic thing? What do you do on Valentine's Day, for instance? Um, I was actually at school, and he actually organised hey, be with my We've friend got that to get stuff. <laughs> We had it in high speed, VT. You sounded like Neil Craig. <laughs> well, what did I do on Valentine's Day? He picked me up from school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. See, that's where I love it. That it is. Just, you just. Yeah. You know what? You just don't know what's going to come up next. That's the no, beauty of it, no, isn't it? No, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what well, we got? Your Crows win tomorrow. Um, uh, who are they playing tomorrow? Rowie? Well, the Eagles, BT. Do you do you even care oh, about us over here? Well, do, do you think I'd be doing any homework on a Crows Eagles <laughs> no. game? Probably not <laughs> no. at this stage. But I think Adelaide probably <laughs> win that. Um, I I can't work out the Eagles. I think no. if you said who's got a better team, I'd say the Eagles have got yes. a better team right now. Yes. But who's going to win? Adelaide are going to win. Yeah. I, I don't know. They're just their senior players seem to have sort of given up on it a little bit. I reckon, but. Um, it's a little, it's a little weird situation at the moment, but no, mm. we're looking forward to the roaming stuff tonight. It'll be good, Rowie. Okay. We'll get back to it. You know where it all came out of the Formula One. You know that from Martin Brundle. You've seen oh, Martin Brundle. Oh, yeah, I have. Pit, yes, I have. The pit, the pit lane walk, and he walks up yeah. to Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise says, "Piss off! I don't want to talk to you." <laughs> and he walks over to the guy from Ferrari, and he can't speak English. And then he walks over to some, you know, tennis star, and she's got a mind there pushing him away. And you go, "How does? How is this entertaining?" 
But it is, yeah. because it's about the pictures. It's not yeah. about what you say or who you interview. It's about the pictures, and people at home make up their own minds about what mm. they think of that person. Mm. But, you know, I, like, I would like players to say, no, I don't want to, be, I don't want to talk tonight, because then you at home will be mm. making, you, you will have an opinion on that guy. Not on me, you have an opinion on the guy that said no. Yeah. What I reckon you've got, BT, is, is a rare art, and not a lot of people in media do that. You, you, you're happy for the other person to be the star, and you, you, you try and get them, even if it's a train wreck, you're happy, well, we're okay, well, you don't want to speak to me, you shut the door, follow me here, away we go. Yeah. It, that, I think, yeah. is the natural beauty of it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do too, and it really is all about the pictures. You know, I remember one, one guy, Joe Danahors, Danaher slammed the door in my face, and, you know, yeah. I, I went home and thought about it, thought that wasn't a very nice thing to do, but then I thought, no, that's good, because people will be forming an opinion on Joe Danaher, not on me, <laughs> and, that's, and, that's, and that's the way it should be, and I just think it brings a little bit of colour and life, and I am staggered that some clubs... Um, are not interested in doing it or don't want to be involved in it. And so that's why we won't do it every week. But, okay. you know, I, I am just staggered because the toughest question you get in that 10-minute segment is, gee, you play well today. Yeah. You know, how, how hard is that to answer? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Channel 7's Brian Taylor, our guest, Roaming Brian. So you've mentioned it. So who are the sad sack clubs that won't let you in? Oh, there's a couple of them around, Rory. I'd say there's a good a high percentage of them. But you'll probably notice as we go through, for okay. tonight we're doing both clubs. It doesn't matter who wins tonight, we'll, we will be there. So they're both good. But, you know, probably Richmond and a couple of others of those other clubs aren't, aren't all that um, interested in doing it. You know, it's all right when you're on the top, but when you're on mm. the bottom, you know, mm. they wanted all the help. They wanted all the publicity they could get from guys like you and me. And now they're at the top, they, they, they tend to look the other way. Oh, do, do both our clubs join in? Absolutely. Good. Both your clubs are very, very good. Both very good. Always been great media performance, the two Adelaide clubs. They've been excellent. Okay. Before we let you go, can, can anyone beat Melbourne for the flag? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think Brisbane, if they get things going with Hipwood, get McStay and Danaher all back fit and running, if they got those three in the forward line, I think they can be a much better side than they are now and competitive. Uh, yeah. As far as the rest goes, I don't know, Geelong, Western Bulldogs, Richmond maybe. Okay. I'm not a big one on Sydney, but yeah, some, one of those clubs. And not Port? You didn't mention Port and all of that? Uh, probably. Port are very capable of putting six, seven, eight games together and mm. playing some really good footy. I just haven't seen it yet. I'm waiting on Charlie Dixon to see how he looks and what difference will that make to what Port do. will be very intriguing, um, but they are still not without a chance, Port Adelaide. They are sailing along and going under the radar at the moment. Well, I reckon after that little episode we've had today with you sounding like Neil Craig, the man for all occasions, I reckon you get a helium balloon to walk into the rooms today and give that a squirt with a squeaky voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is if I see you in any of these rooms oh, no. one day, I'm going to throw you the microphone and say, Rowie, take it away, mate. Off ha you go. Happy days, BT. You're a star. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Well done. Channel 7's Brian Taylor. Roaming Brian is back on 7 tonight. BT, our guest. Yeah, I love Roaming Brian. Brian. He does it well. He does indeed. So, fingers crossed, depending on who wins, it's always entertaining to watch. And you can see it. Uh, when you're after that special drop, trust your pals to have it. Parafield Airport Liquor, home of the hardest to find wine, beer and spirits. Just remember, life is better with your pals. One change for that game tonight, Jake Collajasny is out. Ooh. He has COVID. It's a big so, out. Toby Conway coming into the side. Who are you picking there tonight? Cats and the dogs. Raining cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. Dogs. Mm, okay. Big game coming up. You hear it on 5AA right after we finish at 6 o'clock. Let's check the traffic on the other side. We'll take a couple of your calls. Terry McAuliffe's got a tip for you for the weekend. But first, here's what's happening on the roads. Bit of rain about. Pretty wet and windy on the roads. So do take some extra care and drive to the conditions today. Got a few collisions to look out for. 2-1 at Belair. It's on Belair Road near Windy Point. Power Hill is west. Another collision with a car fire. Bridge Road at Beefield Road. And look out for a smash at Dry Creek. Salisbury Highway near the north-south motorway. Seacliff Urgent Electricity Works there. Brighton Road near Seacliff. Road got delays back to Sturt Road. You can avoid that by heading up Diagonal Road. Keep your eye out for a camera too. Main North Road at Mawson Lakes. What's well, better than getting a mouth watering Krispy Kreme original glazed donut? Getting four of them for a limited time only. Get the $10 four pack for just $8 at OTR stores. Adelaide's most accurate traffic on 5AA.
The 5AA Sports Show Mystery Moments. They gave it everything. As always, nobody could fault their determination. Well, we're up to $300 mm. for the Barrow Hotel Group. If you want the perfect meal, head to the Barrows this weekend. The Albion, the Birkenhead Tavern, the Excelsior, or the Sundowner in Whaler. $300. It's definitely soccer. You know that. Worst case scenario, <laughs> that's why we don't tell you. Worst case scenario, you get a fifty dollar voucher, which again How good's that? dinner for you and the family. Eight double two three double O double five if you think you know the get mystery to moment. The five double A sports show mystery moments. They gave it everything. As always, nobody could fault their determination. 5AA's Best of SA. Dave Benson Caravans has operated for over 28 years. So if you haven't yet, visit their huge undercover showroom. It's like a year-round caravan show with a fantastic range of Australian-built caravans and an experienced team here to tailor the right caravan to your lifestyle. Your holiday journey begins at Dave Benson Caravans. The Best of SA. Thanks to major sponsor Dave Benson Caravans and 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Cars, we love them. From the 4x4 that takes you off grid to the convertible sports model for long coastal drives or your pride and joy that you love tinkering on every weekend. Whatever car you love, eBay has everything you need to look after it. With Australia's widest range of car parts and accessories, all at great eBay prices, you'll find any car part you need no matter what you're looking for. Find it, buy it, fix it on eBay. Everyone's a winner. Five minutes to go, and your anytime goal scorer's on the bench. Well, I just cashed out of my same game multi. Uh, what? It's new. Cash out of your AFL same game multi with Sportsbet. Conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. 1 800 858 858. Do you know how protective your face mask really is? Is it PPE Tech protected? PPE Tech manufactures tight-fitting P2 certified face masks. That means they're proven to filter more than 98% of particles. And better yet, they're made right here in Australia. Right now, get free delivery and save up to 40% off disposable P2 face masks. Don't settle for anything less than Australian-made PPE Tech P2 face masks. Order online at ppetech.com.au today. ppetech.com.au It is 11 to 6. We've got Tezza with some tips shortly. Hey, whether you're catching up with mates or watching the footy at home sip and save have you covered if you're a fan of Han super dry or cooper's dark owl or carlton draft you're in for a treaty treat treat at a, your local sip and save how's this Han super dry 24 packs just 47.99 cooper's dark owl 24 packs 49.99 for carlton lovers get around a 24 pack of carlton draft for a low 54.99 and for even more great offers head in store or visit sip and AU or make it even easier sip and save have a one hour delivery or pickup available in selected areas just download the app or shop online at sipandsave.com.au Attention Dilly Dalliers If you thought you'd run out of time to score a great end of financial year deal on a new Volkswagen listen to this Mawson Lakes Volkswagen is about to receive truckloads of new Volkswagens and they're available at amazing end of financial year prices and remember Mawson Lakes Volkswagen for servicing too with next day servicing and free loan cars don't dilly dally dawdle or delay get a great deal on Volkswagen now Mawson Lakes Volkswagen just a short drive from the city. My Macca's Rewards means now you can earn points with your Macca's run before and after the next game. Redeem your rewards points on all your faves. Order, earn and enjoy with My Macca's Rewards today. Macca's SA, the home of footy. Exclusions apply. Available at participating restaurants. Five minutes to go and your anytime goal scorer's on the bench. Well, I just cashed out of my same game multi. Uh, what? It's new. Cash out of your AFL same game multi with Sportsbet. Conditions apply. Gamble responsibly. 1-800-858-858. Scraped your caravan? Your insurance should cover that. Speak to Walker Crash Repairs and let them fix it. This is Rowie's Sports Show. The 5AA Sports Show Mystery Moments. They gave it everything. As always, nobody could fault their determination. Mm, yes, they gave it everything. It's worth $300 for the Barrow Hotel Group. Uh, hello there, Chad at Henley Beach. How are you going? Great part of Adelaide. Is it raining there? Uh, it is at the moment, yeah. Bucketing okay. down. Bucketing down. I'd love to give you three hunch, but I'd give you 50 if you get it wrong. So you win for Albion Hotel and the Barrows. What is it? 
Uh, I'm thinking it's the 2006 World Cup uh, when Australia get eliminated by Italy in the uh, round uh, of 16. Uh, do, you, do you listen to the show regularly, Chad? I do, yeah. Oh, good. Did you listen about this time yesterday? Didn't, actually. Oh, well, that's your mistake because we had exact same guest yesterday. Oh, oh now, now, Chad, oh, are you your go. ears painted on... <laughs> Not, obviously not tonight. <laughs> Never mind, Chad. You're Chad, still a well winner. done. You're a winner. Because you've won a $50 voucher to the Barrow Hotel Group, so you'll enjoy that. Thanks, boys. Good on you, Chad. Chad, enjoy head the along for the perfect meal, the Albie and the Birkenhead Tavern, the Excelsior, mm. or the Sundowner in Wyala, and we will play for three fifty on Ooh. Monday. Well, our next guest doesn't have his ears painted odd. Never right. has. Terry McCall of Racing.com. How are you, Tez? I'm well, thanks, Rowie. Uh, yeah, good evening, everyone. You're going to be a wet weekend of racing. It would seem that way, wouldn't it? If the Bureau get it right, um, they probably um, they don't always chip that well. Probably a bit like me sometimes, Rory. I think we missed out <laughs> last week as well. <laughs> yeah, don't you crack the forecasters because Bix has a fair crack at them. That's why he has his own rain gauge. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, he's all over it, isn't he, Bix? Okay, give us a winner, please, Tess. I've got a feeling Travis Dowdle might be a stable worth following tomorrow, Rowe. Okay. He's got some good chances. He starts in race five. I think this horse is definitely ready to win, and he's looking for a wet track, rising renown. He's a former Kiwi. Trav hasn't had him all that long, but I know they've been busting to get him onto a really wet track, so my gut feeling is they will probably get the right conditions tomorrow. So that's race five, number five, rising renown, and mm -hmm. I think he's about $9 last Ooh, time I looked. And, juicy. Um, yeah, and he's got some other good chances, Trav, all the way through from that point on, but Probably the best of them is race eight, number eight, Rush Away Lad. Done nothing wrong, and he had the six starts, two wins and four minor placings, including a last start win and a rich SA Sprint Series final on Derby Day. So um, with young Angus Chung to ride, I thought uh, he'd be pretty hard to beat as well. So I'm going to sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm banking on Travis Dowdle doing the right thing for us tomorrow. He's got a really good association with the Port Boys as well, Trav. He, he's got a few of the boys involved in the horses, mm. Um Tommy Cleary, um, okay. Darcy Byrne Jones, Ollie Wines. Okay. Uh, John Butcher's involved with the boys as Butch. well. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, they'll be all over those as well tomorrow, but could be well a done. big day for the Travis Dowdle stable. Race five, number five, race eight, number eight. Two fat ladies, clickety click. Thanks, Tess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old bingo calling day. <laughs> oh, well, got to do something. Well done, Tess. Terry McCullough. Racing.com. Remember, if you are having a bet this weekend, to gamble responsibly. Yeah. Last shout next. Dan Murphy's June catalogue is out now. Shop unbeatable catalogue offers in store or on the Dan Murphy's app today. But hurry, offers end Wednesday, June 15. Choose to drink wise, conditions apply. Hey, Nick Del Santo here. I played over 300 games in the AFL, but I still remember my first game as a rookie. Back then, I needed all the advice I could get. So, if you're after an apprenticeship and need the same kind of expert help, don't go past MEGT. MEGT is Australia's largest and only national apprenticeship network provider, making them your true local apprenticeship experts. With MEGT, a winning career could be yours. So check out their free job board today. Visit megt.com.au or call 13MEGT. Hi, Susanna Toop here. Tenants, you're going to love this. Toop and Toop now gives you early access to rental properties. Hear about properties up to two months in advance and before they become publicly available with email alerts direct to your inbox. No more rushing around to find something in just two weeks. With Toop and Toop, you can now find your next home sooner. So if you're struggling to find a rental property or you want to plan early, simply register now at toop.com.au slash rent. Do the fireworks. Southern Mitsubishi is celebrating the end of financial year with a bang. Ooh, that one's pretty. I like that one. The team at Southern Mitsubishi will light up your life with huge savings across the entire Mitsubishi range, all designed to thrill. Don't miss your chance to start the new financial year on a high. Visit Southern Mitsubishi and save.
147 Main South Road, Morford Vale, driven by Australian Motors, LVD80. Five minutes to go and your anytime goal scorer's on the bench. Well, I just cashed <laughs> out of my same game multi. <laughs> what? It's new. Cash out of your AFL same game multi with Sportsbet. Conditions apply, gamble responsibly. one 858 Hey, Nick Del Santo here. As a rookie, I was mentored by some of the best footy brains around. After all, you don't play over 300 games without starting somewhere. In business, it's easy to find a gun rookie. Just call MEGT. As Australia's largest and only national apprenticeship network provider, MEGT are your local apprenticeship experts. Whether you're an employer who needs an apprentice or you're looking to kickstart your career as one, MEGT has you covered. Visit megt.com.au or call 13 MEGT. 5AA's Business Lounge with Leith Forrest. Well, I'm here with Mark Borlase from RAA. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Leith. If you're a business owner with a fleet of vehicles on the road, you know all about the costs of keeping the vehicles running. But, Mark, RAA may be able to help with the fee-for-service program. Can you explain? Quite right, Leith. If your business has over 50 vehicles on the road, you're eligible for -for fee-for-service. Simply pay the annual nomination fee per vehicle from as little as $40 for a 50 to 99 vehicle fleet. And after that, you only charge when you need us. So Mark, in what instances would a fleet need this RAA fee for service? It could be anything. Unexpected breakdowns, flat battery, empty fuel tank. Basically anything that could lead to an inconvenient delay. It seems like a no-brainer, Mark, if you've got a fleet of 50 or more vehicles. To find out more, search RAA Road Service for Business, subject to limitations on battery range and availability. Delivery of battery replacement only available to fee-for-service product holders. T's and C's apply. Available from RAA. Scraped your caravan? Don't worry, call Walker Crash Repairs, your RAA approved caravan crash repairer. This is Rowie's Sports Show. Two and a half minutes to six, five double A's footy continues from six o'clock tonight. It is the cats and the dogs. Before we go, time for this The Last Shout. A couple of good luck, so a big round of. Um, sample 2 round 9 Nord and North Eagles, Panthers, Tigers, Bloods But it is free entry Let me say that again Free entry for the Sample Crows v Sturt match Now the game's immediately after the Crows-Eagles AFL match mm-hmm. That'll start at 4.30 Crows A second Sturt A fourth Be a cracking game As I say I love my Sample And good luck to George Cambosis Jr yes. He fights the Rat He will unify the world titles He'll have all five do you know it's at Marvel Stadium? Mm. We haven't had a sold out game there in AFL, have we? No. They've got 55,000 there that's to right. watch this bout. So don't tell me we're not going to get out of our seats and watch something that's good. So the, come on, footy team, start playing good footy. The last boxing bout in an open arena like that in Melbourne, I reckon you were there. Mm. It was uh, Jeff Fennick, Zuma Nelson. I was there mm. back Park. in the Crows days. Mm. So 55,000. Good luck, George. Sam. Uh, Shane Warne was remembered at Lords yesterday. Really special. New Zealand take, took on England the first test there, and it was a really memorable occasion. He will be remembered for his cricketing genius as a cultural icon and was simply one of a kind. His shirt number was 23, so for those able, please be upstanding for 23 seconds of applause for one of the greats of the game, Shane Warne. Very respectful. Cultural icon. Mm. Cultural icon. In England, he massive. he was huge. Was he? A rock star. Yep, massive. Yep. Uh, mine is going a little against the grain with this particular show because it's all about the umpire appreciation. Everyone's, you know, blowing up. There's too many 50-metre penalties. Do you know in 2022 so far, we have had 230 50-metre penalties? No. No. Yep. Is that a world record? 230 so far in 2022. Mm -hmm. In 2018, at this time, same time of the season, 234. Oh, no. So there's actually more. Everyone's whinging and complaining. There's 50s Mm. here, 50s there. It's been going on forever. That's the worst. Big book of stiff shit. (laughs) That's the worst that they've ever rolled out of that top lip of yours that you need to get a sponge on. It is. We will see you on Monday. (laughs) Stay tuned. The cats. dirty little. And the dogs. (laughs) Next. Online, on DAB Digital Radio, and on 1395 AM, Talking Adelaide. This is Adelaide.